is time. 11 times now we've dripped knowledge juice all over you. And now it's time for the 11th anniversary special. special. Soldiers eat lunch in the mess hall. Special. Chekhov's looking for the nuclear vessels. Special. We must have sold our soul to the devil. Special. My favorite food toast is oriental. But jumping biscuits like Hansel and Gretel. Special. Better from bug is environmental. Special. My disorder is developmental. 11 motherfucking episodes now come on motherfucker you've got so many episodes to choose from you must listen to these episodes now Special. begin <laughs> and james and i swear if you put your glass back on the table i'll punch you square in the fucking dick man seriously all right um number 11 episode 11 okay um the dog scratching at the door uh, 11, 11 times we've done this. It's a yeah. good time. It's a good time. 11 times of poor and scratch and, and dog. Wow. Yeah, well, he should stop being such a... I don't know. Whatever he's doing. Stop it. Yeah. Um, episode, uh, the theme this week is... Well, the, the uh, topic, topic uh, is James's and Dan's. Yep, so Dan's going to discuss James's and James, that's myself, is going to discuss Dan's. Yeah, in... very simple topic. We should yeah. understand this. Come on. Uh, it's not a problem. And... Uh, yeah, I rock paper scissors, Billy bollocks. Um, oh, hang on a second. Before I, I think this cause we we did the, we did the vote. So for next week, I'm going to decide right now. I'll get ahead of it. Oh shit, sir! I'm getting <laughs> so ahead of this. Right, we'll just go in before we even start any of the um, the education. I hope you've got your notepads out. You know. Um, all right. So blah, 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 blah. you voted. We listened. By which means, by which I mean we're looking right now. Okay, so. <laughs> Next week, the two most popular topics were biscuits and yep. burrowing animals. Ooh. Didn't expect that pairing. No. Um, what do you want, biscuits or burrowing animals? I like biscuits. I'll burrow animals. That's fine. <laughs> nice. I'll give you interesting <laughs> facts about a variety of burrowing animals. And I'm just going to eat some fucking biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> this is my ice cream bar. <laughs> like, like, the note of Badger is actually eight foot tall. Uh, can you let that dickhead in? Because he's not going to stop scratching, is he? I'm on it. Don't you put your glass down. Oh, I'm not going for it. I don't want to get punched in. Punched square in the peen, mate. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Just sit down. Stop being a goose. Come on. What a bell. He's a goose dog. Sorry. Just kick the table. It's fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just like... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right, mate. Leave me alone. Uh, James has been caressing dogs all day, so Stan is very interested in his man, manful, dog um, scent. I'm just getting sniffed everywhere. Okay. All right. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, easy now. Easy, easy meow. Now. Easy meow. Okay. You ready? Rock, paper, scissors, one, two, spooge. Cool. One, two. Mm. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. You My rock. rock beat your scissors. You did. It's true. Okay. Cool. Dan me. Okay, so, this is called Dan Facts. I've got ten facts, which I'm just going to sort of read out, mm. and let's see how it goes. <clears throat> Daniel is a Hebrew name which means God is my judge. Number two, the name Daniel has been around since the Old Testament times. Hmm. Fact number three, Daniel was one of the most popular names in the United States during the 1980s. Hmm. Fact number four, in the Bible, Daniel was a prophet who was thrown into a lion's den. Hmm. Fact number five, among celebrities, some of the most famous people named Daniel include actors Daniel Radcliffe and Daniel Craig. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave those five like that, that yeah. you think of that, and then I've got another five that I can do after. One of your, one of your I plans. like it. I like it a lot. So, do you, do you so find... what you're saying is I, I'm in good company. Well, yeah. you. It, yeah. I'm both biblical and Bond-esque, which yeah. might tie into one of my facts. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Okay, is that you, you, you entering your, your, the first five as a fact? Yeah, that's that, what. So those five are one fact. That I say that's that's like one one fact. Dan, mate, you're being a garbage dog. Come here, come here. Can you, no, he's so ass heavy. You can't pick him up by the front. You have to 
He's got like 90% of his weight is just in his butt. He got badonk donk junk is, in a badonk junk. He does, he does. He is, as they say, thick. Oh, mm. oh yeah, didn't even say. Um, You're on, what's it, some, some single malt? I left it downstairs. It's um, it's an, an Aldi special, single malt We're going to say whiskey. Glen of it, it's fine. Just standard, standard single but, malt. But it's got hints of vanilla. Yeah. And cinnamon. Cinnamon. <laughs> Synonyms. <laughs> and cinnamon. <laughs> Synonyms. Um, yeah, and it's, it's be honest with it, it's nice. Yeah. For, for a cheapen, it's nice. Cheapen, but good. They do cheap booze quite well. I will, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give them the props. Because their, their off-brand, like, fake crap is actually, like, more than passable. And it comes in that cardboard tube, just saying. It makes me feel special. <laughs> you feel like more of a, a, a man. If that was given to me as a gift from a loved one, I would feel so special. Mm-hmm. I had to bite myself, but you know, whatever. Cheers, Katie. Uh, she does. She puts up with a lot, man. She does all right. <laughs> <laughs> she does. She, I think you got to give her a bit of a pass on that. She's she's good people. She's good people. She's yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we're in Jamestown now. Jamestown, which is actually a place. Um, but I won't get ahead of myself. Hmm. Hang on a sec. Oh, that's why. High concept nonsense for later. So James's. I went to historical James's, but. I'll tell you what, my first James is James Bond, all right? Because I figure, like, if, if historical James is, he's had more of an impact than any real James ever has, all right? I mean, I can't think. It's the most famous James. You go to famous Jameses, he's in every single list. And I'm like, you know, it's like there are how many people called, like, you know, Luke Smith could be some guy inspired, but, like, Luke Skywalker, everyone knows that prick. He's inspired <laughs> thousands of people, right? Whereas Luke Smith never did shit. So I feel James Bond, I'm giving him myself a pass on this one because I figure that's my justification. He's, he's as a character, he is more significant than most real people. Okay. Okay? I'll tell you that. Okay. So I've got some random facts because I feel like there's so many things most people would know about. I mean, you know, he's character devised by Ian Fleming. Uh, Ian Fleming came up with the character because uh, he, was, he was bricking it about being married. He was like, basically, he's been this bachelor being a proper little you know fuck boy and he just he was like worried about having to settle down so he wrote some character like oh this guy gets all the poon and i can just i won't feel bad about missing out now because he can just sort of live this little escapist fantasy through this character and he gave him this really look he like oh he's a spy so he'll be have a really loser name he picked james bond because it was a loser name it was like he the new the, the actual he's named after an ornitholo ornithologist which is like a bird doctor or a bird specialist. <laughs> Stanley, good lord. Leave him alone. Lord, you know, this stinking um, dog. Yeah, he's an orthologist and um, he's just, yeah, just like he literally was like, oh, he needs a name like a right little loser. Um, and he'll just, uh, so that he can be just uh, invisible in, as, as a spy. That's, that's that's why they, so like when he sort of says it all suave in the films, like James Bond, that's just, that's not how he meant it to be at all. It was never supposed to be cool, it's supposed to be a loser. Um, so, so it's supposed to be, hi, I'm James Bond. Oh, hello there, I'm Mr. James Bond. <laughs> you know, just, uh, but yeah, anyway, so, um, random facts though. That was that was just by the by. Um, uh, first one, You Only Live Twice, which was, I think, the second or third outing by, or the second or third Bond film, um, starring Sean Connery, uh, was actually scripted by Roald Dahl. What? I know, right? I thought that was kind of cool. That is, that is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was based on the book, but he did the script, uh, which is kind of cool. I didn't even know he did scripts, but yeah. Uh. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, I, che I checked, I read the facts, I was like, bullshit. I went to IMDb and double checked, and it is, yeah, it's rolled up. <laughs> I was like, bloody hell. Um, in the novels, he's, well, there's quite a lot of facts that they just omit from the films because it's a bit controversial. And one of them, the quintessential Englishman, hates, hates tea. <sighs> That's fair enough. No, you're French. You don't understand. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, saying, I'm more, I'm more English than anything else. Oh yeah, well you know you got to be claimed to be a bit English, haven't you? You can't just <laughs> can't just say it. You got to you know. But anyway, I'm saying like it's the most quintessentially English thing, but the most quintessentially English man, and he is an avid coffee drinker. In fact, he's super down for all stimulants, right? In all the books, he takes benzodiazepine pills all the time. Benzos, okay. all right? Because they apparently they used to give them to 
in in like the Second World War, they give him to all the troops to get them wired, right? So in the books, he keeps he literally like constantly popping these pills to get himself super wired. And like it's mentioned in all these books, like in Moonraker and Thunderball, he's like, is I popped loads. He grinds them into his like whiskey, knocks them back. He mixes them with champagne. And like M is in the books going like, rather you than me, James. And he's like, fucking need this shit. Or just rubbing it into his gums. He's a proper junkie. And I'm like, that's they don't. I don't, I don't remember that from the films. But that apparently in the first like four or five books, he's constantly knocking these benzos down, just getting himself like. <laughs> just like super wires right steam coming out his ears time so and then he jumps in and starts like mashing up all these like uh, these spectre uh, villains so yeah that's kind of fun uh, yeah I thought that was kind of fun um, yeah and it's just constantly nick and necking coffee apparently mm-hmm. in like even in Casino Royale he like necks like seven or eight espressos something to get himself like just like out of his mind like wired on he's just into stimulants really badly um, but he blamed tea for the downfall of British Empire and he would mention it frequently throughout the books, even though uh, James, uh, little, little, um, in Fleming was a big fan of tea. Anyway, um, but yeah, the James Bond franchise uh, it's made over seven billion pounds over the years, which is in, adjusted for inflation is nineteen billion pounds today. Damn. Um, over twenty-four movies, and I think the nineteen eighty-three one. Oh, what the fuck was that? Review to a Kill. The bad guy was Zoran, played by Christopher Walken. Oh, I like him, yeah. Yeah. Originally, supposed to be David Bowie. David Bowie? David Bowie. And he uh, he, he was going to do it, and he was like, I don't want to do that. That looks like a bad film to do. <laughs> <laughs> if only you saw that now. <laughs> Where have you gone, James Bond? I'm going to need a very large cod piece. And they said no, so he's like, <laughs> well, I'm out. <laughs> Random David Bowie fact. Did you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is... I'm, I, this, James, this, this is this. I'm, li- I'm leaping off, leapfrogging off. I have. This oh. is just, this is just. Uh, please, please, let me just get this tension out, right? Because like, when am I going to get a David Bowie fact out, right? I'm not going to get a chance, right? So in, um, oh, what was the fucking movie? Um, Labyrinth. What? Labyrinth. Uh, Lab- Labyrinth. In Labyrinth, when he was the Goblin King, right? His codpiece, and I've seen the film since I realised this. It's, well, since I found this, right? It's wrong. It changes sizes depending on the scene, depending on how menacing he's supposed to be. He has a bigger dick in certain <laughs> scenes than other times. He was it was his idea, and the director's like, "Sure thing, Dev Bowie, whatever you want, right?" And he's like, "I'm gonna want a very big cock this time," and he just changes the size of his codpiece dependent on what scene he's at. So like that is a that is an actual plot element in that film, and I've seen it since. I'm like, "Oh god, that is bigger. I like it's smaller." Yeah. I have noticed it. It's, it's more noticeable at some point. I've not actually paid attention. Yeah, it's not, it's to it's not it's not you being a pervert in those scenes. It is actually bigger. Because it's all about the babe. What babe, babe with the power? What power, power, the voodoo? You do voodoo. It's all about the babe. <laughs> oh, <yeah>, my babe. <laughs> it's like, so that's my first fact about James. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, uh, I'm tr- to David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, ledge, fucking mm. ledge. Oh. Ledge. Mm-hmm. I'll um. <clears throat> I could do an episode about David Bowie. Oh, I reckon it'd be really interesting. Be about bummer though. There's some stuff he did that I'm not. <laughs> Maybe we could do a a, a poll about him and see. Why well, that? I don't know what happened to David Bowie's accent then. I thought oh, I'm gonna stop. I'm stopping there. I'm stopping there before he knocks on the door and becomes a special fucking guest. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Quickly to the next right. Dan fact. So, six to ten. The final ten quick facts. Number six. The inventor of the Fahrenheit's temperature scale was a Daniel called Daniel Ward F- F- Fahrenheit. Daniel, he named it after himself. Daniel Fahrenheit. Daniel Fahrenheit. It's a shit name. I know, right? Number seven. The name Daniel is also popular in Spanish-speaking countries such as Mexico, where it is also spelled Daniel D A N I E L. Spelled the same, but mm. hey. Number eight. Some variants of the name Daniel include Danny and Dan. Bit of a shit fact, it's obvious. Number nine, if you're looking for a baby name with staying power, look no further than Daniel. It's never fallen out of fashion since records began in 1880. And ten, and finally, according to the old wife's tale, if you want your son to become rich and successful, name him Daniel. Damn. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> I was the outlier. <laughs> you should have. Should have called me. I was at. The, I think the nurse when I was born was going to call. She said you should call him Sinclair. 
pushing what? they were pushing Sinclair as a name. Okay. Yeah, I think Dan's probably a safer bet. What would you call me? Like if you were, like if I was called Sinclair, right? Mm. Actually, shit. Would you be my friend if I was called Sinclair? Well, if I was called Commodore, we'd be Commodore Sinclair together. Oh no, we, we'd obviously be friends then. Yeah, that's but the, your mum's not a mentalist, so she didn't call you Commodore. Um, I don't. I, I, I think Commodore. It sounds French. Maybe she would. Hey, Commodore, you know, the, hello, Commodore Marcel Stas. Uh huh. <laughs> Although the, the surname was originally not my surname, but mum's was already Morris. Yeah, Commodore Morris. If, if I was, if I was, yeah. Sell him up. I'll be Commodore Morris. I don't know. That sounds like some sort of weird pirate. So, we, sorry, were you James Morris at one point? No, no, no. I was. I was always because my dad did it to my brother. So my mum's surname was Morris. Um, my brother and older sister were Morris. They were Morris at one point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Old, I don't, I've never met your older sister. Yeah, the wedding. No, never met. Her. This is all good. I'm, I'm changing subject. Sorry. That's all right. Sorry. That's cool. That's I'm cool. Sorry, wait. That's, that's, that's near border. His eyes were very wide. I'll shut the fuck up. Sorry. No, we're cool. We're cool. Yeah. But um, that, that's that's my my facts. <laughs> okay. Um, James Bond's done. I'm getting on to James Dean. <gasps> I know that guy. James Dean. Well, this is the thing. I. I've, everyone knows James Dean. He's fucking famous as shit. Now, I'm just going to say. I know of him. Yeah, that's but... the thing, right? Because, right? So, James Dean, I knew he died. I knew he died in a car crash, right? I I assumed, I always, I, I know, I assumed certain things. It seems like it wasn't his fault. He was driving, he didn't have seatbelt on. Seatbelts were not really the law then. It wasn't a big deal. So, not having a seatbelt on wasn't a big deal. He was driving a fast car and another guy hit him. It wasn't his fault. He got, they went off the road into a tree, died instantly. Um, now, that's a tragedy. Uh, he was 24, which is shockingly young. I didn't know he was that young. No, I was going to say, I, I didn't think that. And he'd not done much. Like, he he only ever saw one of his films get released in his lifetime. Damn. And I'm like, that's now that, again, tragic as hell. What's weird to me, and... Didn't he do the jeans? Think of the jeans... He was... I, I don't think he advertised jeans in his lifetime. He's just famous for... Because he... Uh, Rebel Without a Cause, he, he was just mm. like playing a sort of, um, you know, like, you know, what are you rebelling against? Whatever you got, you know, just, the, <laughs> just you know, but like that was, it was, he somehow tapped into the zeitgeist at that time. He became whatever the hell everyone was into, he got into it right then. But I'm saying like, I don't understand why you and I are talking about him, I think 60 years after he died, mm. uh, ne- nearly 60 years, but like, it's kind of crazy to me. That that's the case because honestly, I was looking through it. I'm like, he didn't do shit. He didn't really didn't right. He he like I mean I've got a few little facts about him, but I'm like there's not much to unpack because he, he had a couple of relationships. Um, uh, yeah, by all accounts, he was a really charismatic chap. Um, apparently, he had terrible personal hygiene. Like he just used to walk walk around barefoot around Hollywood, right? Oh no. Yeah, no. He just he, he smelt. He didn't wash very often. Um, he. It was widely suspected he was gay, but no one really knew because he seemed to, he was, I think he was married, but it was considered to be like just a sort of for show sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, and he apparently had a few relationships, but it was never kind of confirmed. So it, it was kind of, there were rumours that he was, uh, uh, you know, but that was, that was sort of the sort of thing, you know, that would have rumours about back then. Now it wouldn't be an issue. But um, yeah, he just seemed to be charismatic. He would go off script a lot. Uh, people used to like some. I mean, like he he was in a film. It's about when Ronald Reagan was an actor. Ronald Reagan didn't like him because he just he'd go off script and he's like, just read the fucking line, boy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but like you know, whatever the hell, just a typical bloody you know, uh, you know, mother method actor wanker. He's like, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> this guy just called me the character's name the whole movie. You're like, oh, seriously. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it's it's just one of these guys. I'm like, I I've always known him. And I've never really looked into it. When I looked into it, I was like, there's nothing really here. And I don't mean that to be critical, because he died at 24, so there's not, I don't expect there to be shit. I, I mean, if you were to t- summarise my life when I was 24, there wouldn't be a huge amount to say, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's barely much more now, but I'm saying, like, you know, that's like half my life. 24, I hadn't done shit. He'd done some of these films, which I know the name of, 
but they're not like you know apart from rubber that of course none of them you'd know now really and none of them you certainly i don't think you've seen any of them you've probably seen a couple of clips and you've seen his photo but honestly like it's kind of mad it's kind of crazy but yeah um he just right place right time sort of thing i mean not for being alive but for being famous he just whatever it was he just tapped into it um and it's weird sometimes that happens you mm -hmm. know there's certain times like there'll be a new story or an actor or a character or something that'll just everyone can't shut the fuck up about it and he was that guy and he still is and it's mad um uh, but anyway that was james dean not much to say before before i go into my next stand fact go on. at the age of 24 hmm. what would have been your accolade i've got two. No oh, silence i'm just thinking I'm not sure I even had a proper good... I think I was... Did you have any skills? Any Anything in particular? Apart from playing the bass and things like that. Did you have any sort of like proper... I playing the bass then? I had a bass. I wasn't in a band at that point. What? Was I in a band? I might have been in a band. I'd played... No, I'd played bass in a band. I wasn't in a band that was gigging or anything. But I was... I don't know. I don't think I'd done anything significant, really. I, th I think i just got an okay job. But that was it. That was it, mm. and I'd met my fine lady. But um, you know, no kids, no, no, no nothing. I'd, you know, there wouldn't be much to show for it, which is kind of sad, really. But go on, you mm. tell me, what did you achieve? Twenty-four. So I remember, I was working at a pub from from the age of sort of eighteen onwards. Then it's twenty. It was going out with someone. Blah, blah, blah. Um, my accolades were. Can I just say this counts as James' fact? Okay, so this is for me. I get this point. Go on. Bonus point for Dan. I was able to, I learned that I could s stick quite a lot of my finger in my air socket, like the, to the first sort of first sort of bend, and I could get my finger really far up my nose. Yeah. That, I think they're two of my... my... I mean, <laughs> I know you can do both those things, <laughs> and it makes sense you had those worked out by then, but I suppose hearing it is like that's... <laughs> Quite the. Um... I knew where my life path was going. <laughs> <laughs> Freak ship. <laughs> That's a pretty awesome obituary. Like he could do marvelous things, such as <laughs> they just list them off, both of them. <laughs> he could also yeah. down a sprite in a second. Oh, <laughs> what a winner! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Look where you are today, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm the big cheese. It started with a kiss. <laughs> Oh, Doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. It, it fit. It fit. Dan me. All right, that's that's your bonus facts. Cool. Um, Keep slapping your thigh. I'm sorry. That's that's all right. It's nice. It's oddly nice. sensual. Don't say it's nice. That makes <laughs> it wasn't that weird until you said it. <laughs> now, yeah. now it's fucked. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. Now that was him. <laughs> slapping Dan. <my> Dan, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Don't. You're breaking the mic. Stop <laughs> it. Oh dear. So one one of um. You say its name, you, you know it is, everyone knows it. He's a good guy, Danny DeVito. Ah, oh, yes. So, I'm trying to look up lots of facts about people, and I thought this trying to find like facts which isn't like he's done this and he's acted this and there's another. So, Danny DeVito, following graduation in 1962, he took a job as a cosmetician, um, cosmetician at his sister's beauty salon. A year later, he enrolled into New More. In, New York's American Academy of Dramatic Arts, so he could learn more about cosmetology. Whilst at the Academy, he fell in love with acting and decided to further pursue his acting career. So basically, Danny DeVito, before he started doing his acting, worked with makeup for his sister, mm. then went to go and learn more about the whole makeup side of things. So he's like completely different, but. I, th I just didn't think he'd be the sort of make-up-y sort of person, but mm. then he'd done a sort of acting career from that sort of thing. It's um, it's weird to people that... Because, like, the paths they get into acting... Like, you know who else did um, bloody... Um, who, who did makeup artists and stuff artistry before they got into acting? God. Was bloody Hawkeye. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. Um, he's He was a... Yeah, I mean, that's what he did. Uh, hang on a sec. I'm going to check... I forgot... Dan is currently looking up Hawkeye. I forgot his name. And I, I'm, I'm. Oh, this is normally, this is literally my my one skill. <laughs> I can't remember. 
<laughs> Everyone's screaming, Jeremy Renner, Jeremy Renner, right? Yeah, so he used to do makeup for movies and stuff. He used to work in the makeup trailer and he'd get everyone ready. And then um, he started doing bit parts and then he got into acting. But he's still like early, he'd do his own makeup for his like, um, for his early roles and, and his like his, you know, his photos and stuff that he'd do. Um, but yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. But I guess it takes, I mean, like quite often if you're in the industry and they're looking for a certain type of person and you just happen to be around, it's probably not a bad way to get in. They just, you know. Well, if you're surrounded by the people, the right people at the right time and thing. Isn't yeah, it? and if you go in, they go like, because it's one of, there's, there's, there's all you can say about like, um, like nepotism and all that in these industries, but ultimately the cream does rise to the top. Like if you're good, you tend to get the good roles. And if you're like, like people who are good do pretty well. And people who are good and are nice tend to do very well. So like if you're a really good actor and you're a nice guy, like Tom Hanks, right? He'll do all right. He was always going to do all right. Yeah. You know, and there's there's certain people that are just like they're always going to do good because they they've got the skills and they got you know the attitude. But I suppose if you've worked in a sort of a lowly job like putting makeup on on stars' faces, <laughs> you probably you know you're not too up your own ass probably. Looks like um, I need to start doing makeup for people. Then I'm going to get noticed, and they go, "Oh, it'll do." Well, I've been asking. Hmm. I mean, we we you don't realise this. We put a lot of um, prep into this the podcast. I yeah. know it's an audio medium, but I feel like if you look good, you sound good. That's just my my theory, right? Well, it's like so, if you want to be positive over the phone. Yeah. You you sit upright. You have yeah. put a smile on your face, and you have that P M A positive, positive mental, mental attitude. attitude. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, and then you know, then you just success the whole time. It's I, I've never been at work, and I've made a phone call. Mm. I'm sitting upright. I'm being on desk. I've done my spill. No one's ever once said no. No, exactly. No, that's, that's why. So yeah. you get good hygiene. You smell nice. You make sure you've got a you know finely I, shaved scrotum. You have all those things ready. I do that before every single phone call because I think it might grow a little tiny bit beforehand. So I get the old clippers out. It looks a bit embarrassing at work sometimes. I don't have a door, but you know, I'm just, oh, James is about to make a phone call. Yeah, no, this is going to be a good phone call. He got really close to the bone that time, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> That's for last week. All right. Yeah. Next Dan fact. Um. Uh, well, I, I done I done my damn facts. Um, oh yeah, you did. Didn't you? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, because you put the James back then. Um, all right. James Earl Jones. Dude. Mufasa. Darth Vader. Hmm. I mean, so he's ninety three. No, he's not. He's yeah, shit, damn. He's cool. ninety three. Yeah. That blew my fucking mind, right? Which it, I don't know more because I was like, no, oh, I don't be that old. Because no. I don't want. I don't, I, he's one of these guys that I've never. I've heard him talking to Matt. You know, apart from I that a few episodes of Big Bang Theory, and I saw him in some interviews. Right, yeah. I don't know him. I don't. You know, I've got no real affinity for. But I just. He's one of these people that's. He's so quintessential in in like you know the Lion King and yeah. Darth Vader and um, I'm thinking of Conan the Barbarian and, and it's all these characters. Like not loads of characters really. But oh bloody um, what's his name uh, coming to America? What are you gonna say? Um, he's in Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Shit, I didn't know that. What old old one the remake or no, not in eighty two. I need to watch that again. Dude, yeah, no, he's got a weird bowl cut, but no, he's the king of the snake <laughs> tribe, the snake cult. Oh, he's that dude. He's the guy that like points at people and they just throw themselves to their death, and he's like, <laughs> I'm trying to remember the line he says. Oh, he has an awesome line. There's some great lines in that film. Yeah. It's really good. Oh, I've got to read that. Yeah, we got to watch it again. Yeah. It's really good. So good. Mm. Uh, <laughs> there's, yeah, no, it's a great film. Uh, but yeah, no, he's he's just... And the thing is, though, he plays like... Um, but he seems like a ledge as well, right? But he was... What was it? Uh, he was, yeah, he was born with a stutter, right? So he's born with a stutter. He couldn't fucking speak properly, like, at all. It was like, like... It wasn't just like a little... Like, it was proper... He could not get a sentence out. So he started reading poetry, and he'd write poetry in class, and his teacher would make him stand at the front. Um, so when he was like eight, he would keep doing this, and he found that if he was reading poetry and kept focusing on the words and kept going over it, so his teacher basically said, all right, we're going to put you in the drama. So he started doing plays. So he got into acting to kill his stutter. That was all. He wasn't really... He didn't know it, but it turns out, by the time he got it down, because he would just prepare like, fuck, just get this script down in his head... He'd go out there and he'd just crush it. And they were like, this guy's good, right? But they reckon a lot of it, because he had to sort of like relearn how to talk when he was at that age, he has this weird cadence that just 
I don't know, just killed. Like so, he goes and he does this like voiceover work, or he like when he does, he's done like a load of voice work. Actually, there's a weird thing because I think, um, oh, what was it? Uh, Morgan Freeman had a thing where he had to kill an accent. He used to have a different accent, and he had to like lose the accent. And when he relearned it, he spoke in such a way that he's just his voice is so unique. And there's certain people that just have this crazy like. Like if you hear like James Earl Jones especially because he's got that big deep voice, but but mm. like Morgan Freeman, it's just no one sounds like him. He's like he has to go like hello, and you're like Morgan yeah. Freeman. Like everyone could do a Morgan Freeman impression. Christopher Walken as well. Like he's I don't know what his story is, and I'm not saying he's the same. <laughs> I'm just saying like <laughs> God damn that boy has an yeah. you know. But like yeah, but James Earl Jones, um, a fascinating dude. Um, so what else? He's blah, 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 blah. I think it's when you said about like the whole Big Bang Theory. I mean, oh gone right. Mufasa, Darth Vader, that's how I know him. Yeah. When he's in the Big Bang Theory, he does those crazy funny bits and it's Well he's just silly bug, really. Con- complete contrast, like, mate, you're a funny fuck. Well, because he's, he's, he's in his eighties yeah. then and he's just yeah. fucking around. He's fucking around Carrie Fisher's in there as well and he's just dicking about, isn't he? Yeah. He just he can play with the mythos, right? He didn't take credit for um when he was doing Darth Vader because he wasn't actually in the film. No. So he got credit I think in the first J- first Star Wars film, but in second or third he just he took it uncredited. They still paid him, but you know he, he mm. didn't take. He would literally sort of see he refused to credit. He says, "I oh, don't credit me for that. I wasn't, you know, like." But he's like I, I, unquestionably. I mean, have you heard, ever heard David Prowse, the, the guy who played Darth Vader, the guy in the suit? Have you ever heard him talk? Ah, uh, long, 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 long time ago. It's yeah, so it's cool. just like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> I am your father. I am your father, Luke. <laughs> You, 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 you're one of us. You're a bad man, just like like the rest of us. You are. You can't read, and you can't write, but I can drive a tractor. I can drive a tractor with my lightsaber. I can. I'll fucking cut your head off. I will. So that's what he sounded like. And then he's like, "I'm gonna overdub that." And Dave Prowse is like, "Oh, bugger, you are." So <laughs> that sounds a wee bit better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So like, oh, that is better. I can't really do that. So, but anyway, but like he felt David Prowse. Oh, he did such a good job in that suit. It's a yeah. bit out of order me taking the credit. And everyone bloody knew it was him, right? And obviously in America, he's like... Even, I know the amount of voice work he does in America for all the TV programs, like, this is CNN, and all that stuff, from just watching <laughs> Simpsons. And yeah. like, I, I know he's... Um, yeah. And I mean, like, we all know the... I am your father, and all this. And, and, and like the... Um, oh, the, the, the clouds in Lion King. Yeah, yeah, right? So he's just one of these guys that's just iconic. And... And 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 um, King, oh King, no, what's his name? I know it. I bloody know it from from coming to America. Um, oh, it's it's a funny name. I don't know though. I, I know of it, but I don't know. Coming to America. Oh, I love that film. Anyway, um, I mean, oh, that's not from that film. That's from uh, Rocky Four. But um, <laughs> <laughs> featuring James Brown. So shut up. Um, but. Um, uh, James Earl Jones. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm trying to reference, I'm researching this in real time. So I, I've I've done all my research. I've got all my facts. No, down. I'm sorry. And, I'm just and, I'm elaborating. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I've got oh King Jaffy Jafar, Jaffy Jafar. Yeah. Anyway, so that was yeah. What's his name again? I want to read it properly. Come on. Oh, you bastard. Anyway, King Jaffrey Jafar, that was it. But anyway, uh, and he was... I watched the second one and he passed away. I felt really bad. I was like, oh. And obviously, he's not. He's alive in real life, but in yeah. character he passed away. I was like, oh, what, what, a, what a waste of not having him in it. Anyway, and the only other fact I have about him is that he has sold his voice to Disney. Dude, really? Yeah. So, in the last, in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show... The yeah. Darth Vader voice in it was AI. They they own his voice, and they just basically well because like, he's like, okay, oh you know he's like I mean look he 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 did he made a statement that broadly I'm totally paraphrasing was basically like I'm not going to be around forever. I I can't I don't, I don't sound like I used to anyway, and I'm happy to do it, but like I don't want to do anything, and they give me loads of money, and I get constant money, and my grandkids get money, and I'm like bothered. Mm. And I, I trust them to not damage the legacy. And even, yeah. if, they, even if they do, bothered, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, and if I was 93 and I had grandkids, and I'm like, I'll just put money in their pocket by signing a piece of paper. Yeah. Bothered, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I think he's quite happy with it. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm okay with it. 
Yeah. But yeah, so Darth Vader will be around, you know, forever, forever. I mean, and the thing is, you know, yeah, they haven't. You might have seen him like in one series. They had his voice a bit, but how many like toys and games have come out with that voice in there that they just use the AI? I mean, they probably it pays for itself probably for them yeah. after after a few few months of doing it. Um. Anyway, do you want to let Dickhead back in? Yeah, because he's being a whiny bitch again. I don't think you pick it up, guys, but he's uh, he's at the door again, at the gates. Um, he's a dog bird. He's all. a dog with an alcoholic content because he's whiny. All right, I got six more Jameses of note. Um, well, I got one, two, I got more. Yeah, you got a lot this week. I feel like a bit yeah. faster. I'll tell right. you what, I was looking at them. A lot of them, I'm like. I don't care. I'm like, like there's some that are like arguably very famous people, but I'm getting into it. I'm like, it's not interesting though. It's like, it's a lot. I've been like a lot of the people. Like there's um, there's a bunch of James, uh, American presidents who are Jameses, and and like there's um, James. I, I I just didn't. Uh, James Madison, who was the founder of the writing of the. He was one of the guys who co-signed the. Um, uh, sorry if you're American. Ah, uh, go on. No, no. Stan, get seriously, mate. You you suck. You suck, doggy balls. Um, but no, like he he was a you know fun founding members. I think he was the fourth president, or maybe I don't know. He was he was one of the early boys, and he was you know like the foundation of America. And I'm like reading through his story, and I'm like, and he you know, and James Madison, another president, he got shot, he got killed, uh, in office, which is kind of a big deal, obviously like you know. Uh, like JFK was his John so I can't no. but I'm saying like yeah they're both presidents and I'm sure they were significant in America but I don't have that sort of um, base knowledge the foundation knowledge in them so I'm like I don't I'm reading through it I'm like yeah they lived big lives they did some stuff but I'm like I don't really give a fuck so I assume some, most of you won't either sorry America I know it's like this is, this is you know schoolroom stuff and there probably is some interesting stuff to be had but unless I find out like you know they you know, I had bodies in the cellar. I don't really care. <laughs> or like, you know, both sexual organs or something fun. It just didn't seem interesting. So that's why I omitted certain people. But anyway, sorry, Dan, damn me. And that is that reason is why some of my facts are a bit crap. <laughs> uh, for instance, Dan Aykroyd. Mm. Fucking mad, isn't he? Well, I did notice um, Dan Aykroyd claims that he is... Um, had spectacular UFO encounters four times. Lunatic, isn't he? <laughs> Actor Dan Aykroyd shared his experience with an unidentified flying object, brackets, UFO, hmm, um, what he describes as a large grey balloon-like object. Was it a balloon? Well, well. Was it actually a balloon? There was no lights on it or anything. Like a balloon with It was no just lights. like a normal balloon. Yeah, like a regular balloon. Yeah. But, but, but. it could have been a balloon because it's like the size of, like, the, 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 um... Uh, the, the balloon festivals in America where they have all the character balloons is so about the size of blimp. one of those. Yeah, uh, it's just like, it's like one of those. So it could could it have could it have been like a small balloon but close up, so it looked like a big balloon far away? He could have been just standing close to it. Yeah, he says it's a large grey balloon like objects, but yeah, like a balloon. Okay, mm. and he's seen he's seen that four times. Yeah, four times. Is there a balloon in his like house and he just keeps seeing it? <laughs> Tell uh, but no, it, it went off. It didn't. It didn't shoot off like one direction. And suddenly disappeared. It slowly went off into one. That it went. I can't remember the mile. I didn't write it down. So it it floated away. Yeah, basically. Like a like a balloon. Yeah, yeah, but four times. So you know, this it, this has happened four times. He's seen four balloons. It might have been a birthday party. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I I saw he was on. Um, I saw a podcast I listened to. And he was because he's hockey. He's got like a, he sells tequila, I think. Might be might be vodka. I can't remember what it was. He sells some spirit, and he makes a big deal of it. Um, but it's in like this, um, you know, the Crystal Skulls. The um, yeah, not the shit film. I mean, the actual Crystal Skulls <laughs> they found around the earth. So he he's he, he's he's like he's I think it's tequila. He sells inside like these. He makes his own Crystal makes Skulls. Sense, yeah, yeah, and he sells them because it's like oh aliens and shit. But he's like one of these like people that's just. They got really rich doing cool shit like comedy and you know improv and stuff, and then they're like, for some reason, they went down some rabbit hole. Like bloody um, Tom DeLonge from Blink One Eight Two, who's just mental, just fully like, 
I've been talking to all these generals in the US government and they've all told me that aliens are real and they all talk to me all the time and all this stuff and I'll play Bling One and Two songs, sure, but I really believe in aliens. I'm all about aliens. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. You know, Travis Barker's like, can we just play the song? Jesus, Tom, seriously, man, can we just... <laughs> yeah, Mark Hoppus is there, like, <laughs> like, hey, guy, let's just, just play some songs. It's all good, guys. Mm. And he's just like, yeah, but, you know, you like they're, they're out to get us, just so you know, guys, just so you know. Like, sh- sure, sure, they're out to get the Blink-182 guys. Yeah. You're talking about like he's anyway, but yeah, I think there is a, a fringe uh, element in America, and he's for whatever reason, Dan Aykroyd, man, he he was the Blue Brothers is so good. Well, that that is my thing. It's, it's so you go good. like nutty, all I've seen balloons, all oh, balloons, balloons, they're aliens, all. Oh. But then you think they got things like the Blue, Blues Brother, and I I really 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 like one of my favourite songs. That is a rubber biscuit one. It's like complete nonsense. Ah, but I'm gonna be doing it. I'm home. I'm gonna be 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 home. Have you ever had a wish sandwich? A wish sandwich is two slices of bread, and you wish you had some meat. Boom! But I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be home. 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 Have you heard of a ricochet biscuit? You can throw it against the wall and it should bounce straight back into your mouth. If it doesn't, <laughs> you go hungry. <laughs> it's just that, it's like complete nonsense over and over. But there's so many songs in that film, which is... I remember you know, that. I, mean, I probably would in context, but I I, yeah. I had the soundtrack. I should remember that really, but I don't remember yeah. that. Honestly, Rubber Biscuit, I can love that song. It's, it's, not, it's, it's a noise, basically. It noises some words on it. Um, I'm gonna play on mine because I got batteries getting low and I can't afford to risk no, it. No, cool. R- uh, can't risk it to get the biscuit. But yeah, uh, he's a mad chap. But then yeah, Ghostbusters and 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 all the SNL stuff he used to do, and and bloody and and what else? What else? I'm just starting to think of like building your online business. Oh 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 oh! Don't nick don't for my other ads. I'm not. I'm not building your online business. <laughs> you should try. Oh, come on. It's mad. They were touring and they were like one of the biggest bands in the yeah. world at the time. It's, it's kind amazing. of crazy. Okay. Good belief, she isn't it? Yeah. Just see this face. Like... Oh, no, he's into it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this, I didn't know this, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's not, it's not even a school's turd, honestly. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like the random sort of, the things, that's the old wish. The other day, you know I had a wish sandwich. Well, a wish sandwich is the kind of a sandwich where you have two slices of bread and you wish you had some meat. Ball, ball, ball. <laughs> Yeah, if you've not heard it, I recommend to listen to it. And um, if if Dan Aykroyd, you want to send me some money for promoting that, get some royalties, that's fine. If not, I'll send some fucking balloons away, mate. Nutty squirrel. Yeah. yeah. Just some of tequila would do. I think that'd be all right. Oh, you do, right? Oh, you do, right? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't. I think you get some people. You know, you know, done enough good stuff. You've done enough good stuff, man. I can, I can, you know, spies like us. Mm. Um, Actually, I tell you what, close point blank, he's great in that. He's a bad guy, and he's great. Oh, I can't remember really that's, that's it. long, long time ago. Yeah, ninety seven, man. It's a great film, dude. Great film. I feel fucking old. Oh, no, old as hell. Old as hell. I won't, I won't say anything yet until my other facts. Um, I'll do that next actually, but it's only short facts. But yeah, okay. I've got another fact about James. Mm, mm, James mm-hmm. is. James Cameron, the crawling pioneer. <laughs> James Cameron, world record-breaking filmmaker, yes. deep sea diver, mm. filmmaking pioneer, Ooh. an all-round mentalist. Um, <laughs> he's just a fucking lunatic, right? But 
The thing with James Cameron is people do try and rag on him because he is one of these guys who just keeps like, I don't know, he self-promotes and he's like, he seems to be a bit up his own ass. But then you cannot mess with the guys. Like, he's, he's not made a bad film. Like, even, like, sorry, like, like, so I, I feel about it. So, obviously, he's fam- most famous for, like, obviously Avatar recently and Titanic and... But and Terminator, and 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 tr- True Lies, and 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 The Abyss, and Aliens, and I mean the guy's got a hell of a track record, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> my, my, I'm sorry, they're my favourite films ever. I don't care what people say. T- T- I like the no, third one T- as well. I like them all. Well, no, T2. He didn't make T2. T3. T- he made T. He made T1 and 2. And they are a million times better than any of the others. Which, some of which I've enjoyed. 1 and 2 are the fucking best by 1 by and 2. But like, Terminator 2 might be the best yes. action film ever made. It's... I, the thing is, though, the only one it goes up against is like... You've got you've got like you've got Aliens, T hmm. two, Die Hard, maybe the Matrix actually, and Predator. I fucking love I love love. <laughs> we should watch as all well. those films one night. Just like watch them all back to back. We'd be we'd have such giant nuts by the end of that film fest, right? <laughs> such high testosterone. But like it's they're they're just great films. But no, he's just the thing is, and you watch those films, and people like they criticise. All kinds of things. When Avatar come out, they're like, it's just like bloody um, Dances with Wolves, right? It's just Dances with Wolves, but they're blue. And they're just, <laughs> they're just space cats. All that. Like, yeah, mate, shut up. That film's great. That film's amazing. It, it, I, I've watched that film a dozen times. It's bloody brilliant. It's stunning to look at. It's beautifully edited. The music's great. I mean, the characters, the acting. You know, I mean, the thing is, right, there are actors in that film that are dog shit in everything else they've done. And then they come out and James Cameron makes them great. And there's certain people that just... If you see him in a James Cameron film, you're like, oh, they're great. Michael Bean is great. I mean, he's Carl Reese in, in Terminator. He's in The Abyss. He's the guy with the tash, the, the Marine. He's like... And he's bloody brilliant. And then he just doesn't... He can't quite cut it anywhere else. He just doesn't quite... And I just... But he seems... He, uh, anyway, so... Mm. But, you know, so J- James Cameron, though, right? So as a, obviously he makes films. So, in 1977, I'm just, he's a truck driver, right? So this is, he's a truck driver, he's driving his truck, and he pulls over, and he parks up, and he goes and watches the first Star Wars film, it's just come out, and he's like, bloody hell, that's really good. Oh, I'm not going to drive trucks anymore, I'm going to make films, this is, this is crap. So he goes to make films. So, that's 77, when they come out, right? Okay. So it's 1977, so then, 1982... He, he makes in that interim he goes to work at a lot of film studios he gets work he works on effects he works on prosthetics he makes um, I think he worked with Stan Winston making some of the effects work for some of the films right? I think he might have even worked behind the scenes on some of the Star Wars films right? so he makes a, a film called Xenomorph or something right? it was like some little short movie right? Um, he then gets his first directing job on a film that he's not written or anything he's just something to do he's just, he's just, a, just a directing gig which is Piranha 2, which is actually okay. It's just, but it was like, you know, it was cheesy. I think it was uh, Roger Corman. Roger Corman used to make all those old B movies and, uh, you know, those old, like, 50 foot woman attacking the planet sort of thing. You know, he'd make that really incredibly cheap, high concept, incredibly cheap, crappy sort of um, movies, like sci fi and horror and stuff, right? But anyway, so he, he made that on a, on a shoestring. Um, and by all accounts, Roger Corman, he'd get a lot of filmmakers their first the first job. So he did that, he made a film, and off the back of that, that was 1982. So he literally was a truck driver, five years later he's directing a movie, and then two years after that, he's I've made one film, he's like, I've got this script I've written <laughs> called Terminator. And he goes to, and he, <laughs> and he goes to talk to bloody, um, you think, oh, he, who's he going to want to play the Terminator, right? Yeah. Um, so he goes to talk to, um, he goes like, I want someone who's a Brickshire's house who can really kick ass, right? O.J. Simpson, will you be the Terminator, please? And he goes to O.J. Simpson and he's like talking to him. He's like, oh, 
mate, no, you've got to be this murdering machine. You have to be a right murdering bastard. <laughs> and and he's talking to him. And he's like, this guy's too nice. No one will believe he's a murderer. <laughs> no one will think he's a monster. No, 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 we can't have that. So he says, I can't. He meets, he, and he sees Arnie. He sees Pumping Iron, which has come out a few years earlier. I think it was 78, 79. And so he, he sees Arnie and he's like, oh, this guy. This guy's got some charisma and he's a brick shit house, And he looks like a fucking machine anyway. Hmm. He'd be perfect. So he goes to talk to him, and Arnie's like, I don't know, I don't know, mate, I don't know. Because he'd done Conan by that point. Yeah. Um, he's like, oh, I don't know, I've got to be careful with my choices. Um, and uh, and eventually he agrees to it, and he goes to it, and, and like the, all the choices they made in that film, the, some of the shots, they cut his dialogue right down, like Arnie's cut dialogue. And they thought it was, everyone thought, oh, yeah, it's because he can't act for shit. I'm like, no, that wasn't the reason. The reason was, Arnie's like, why would he say any of this shit? He's a fucking machine. Why would he say it? Even yeah. like, um, like he's, I'll be back. He's like, he wouldn't say that. He's a robot. Why would he conjugate his, he would say, I will be back. I will be back. He sort of said, Arnie, just fucking say it. So like James Cameron's like, this argument with Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, just say it, I'll be back. It just sounds cool. Just say it. He's like, it just doesn't make sound. It doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. He's, he's, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, because then you'll do uh, it. The same if he knocks on the door. I'm just saying. He's not going to knock on the door. I made sure. I, I, he's actually in Austria right now. He's not coming over. So, no, he's not here. Um, but anyway, so he's, um, oh my God. <laughs> I accidentally pressed, it's been it's been it's been writing down everything I said. <laughs> I've just I've got my notes here and I've just narrated everything into the notes app. Podcast oh, it's still doing transcript. it. Stop doing that. All right. Anyway. Um. Oh God. So my notes now are just me talking. Um. He has also visited the Titanic's wreck in a sub. Okay. Thirty-three times. Uh, okay, so you, you see something like that once, and you go, "Oh, I, I oh. can't, I don't know why he go down that." I think he just likes it. I think he just he really likes diving. He loves diving, loves it. Um, he's also done a solo. He's the record holder. He's the uh, a solo uh, journey to the lowest point of the Marianas Trench, which is the deepest part of the the Earth's ocean, on his yeah. own. So yeah. over seven miles down. That's a bit mental. That's crazy, and he's done hundreds of dives in in that region of like depth. It's just just a crazy. It's one of these guys. You're like, you could criticize his films, but you can't. Like, and you could say, oh, he shouldn't have made that much money, but they're great. And he's inspired countless filmmakers since. And he's not just a director. Like, he's a script. He writes the scripts. He's a script writer. He's a screenwriter. He's a story writer. He's um, he gets right in. He gets behind the camera. He's he did a lot of effect work before he became a filmmaker. He's done a bit of everything, right? He's one of these guys that's just done it all. And I'm like, you can't. Some people, you're like, nah, just respect, you know. And yeah, like he just and I, you know, he's probably a bit of a boy. Everyone is, but as far as I know, he's not done anything criminal. So I'm like, just <laughs> there's certain people like just let him be great. Just yeah. some, <laughs> we we need our heroes, you know. Some people are just like unless unless he's breaking crimes, just. Let's breaking laws even. Yeah. Just leave fucker alone. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm just I'm waiting for him to get me too for some shit because <laughs> everyone does. But um, anyway, yeah, James Cameron. Yeah. Ledge respect. Nice Oosh. guy. Nice guy. Nice guy. Okay, so my my Dan fact, or in this case Daniel fact. So just to be clear, I am not a Harry Potter fan. I don't, I don't like the films. Um, the first one that I saw was at the cinema with my lovely wife when we were stuck in blue water and it was snowing and we didn't, we couldn't do anything. The cars were stuck, so we went to the cinema and we saw one of the Harry Potter films and at the end of it, Voldemort appears. We're sitting at the front of the cinema and I stand up and said, who the fuck's Voldemort? And quite a lot of people just stood up and started laughing at me after that. I said, oh, oh, he's Harry Potter noob. So more reasons to fucking hate it because people take the piss out of me. I'm calling them. I'm calling them. All right. Don't stop. But Daniel Radcliffe, I found out a little, a little tiny nugget of facts Can about I? him that Can made I? me respect him more. As a drummer, this is. As a drummer, okay. Daniel Radcliffe broke over eighty prop ones whilst making the Harry Potter film because he kept using them as drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eighty. 
Yeah, overrated. Bloody hell. But that's what you keep... Like, I keep tapping on things at home with my hands or whatever, and, I, and often I get... I get... Well, okay, go, oh, stop tapping! Stop tapping! Stop it! So I can just imagine, right, Daniel Radcliffe on, on the set, tapping away, and then Hermione going, oh, stop it, Potter! We can't be doing this no more! Then Ron Weasley, oh, stop it, Potter! And, um, yeah, so... Or they might call him Daniel at the time, but, um, yeah... I've never got. I, I don't need to, but I just I tried because of kids and stuff. I thought, oh, we should really give that a crack. And I I missed the boat when I was you know because like they were the books were a bit too when they come out. I was I, I, they were a bit. I was just I was the wrong age. I think if I'd been a couple of years younger, I probably would have read all those books. But they were a bit. I felt like they were a bit younger than I was reading at at that point when they come out. Um, and then. The films came out and I was like, oh, I haven't read the books and I don't really, I don't know. It's like, it's, it seemed like kiddie shit because I was like 18, 19. I wanted to see, you know, I was heavy shit. You know, I was mm. I was into a lot. I was getting into like, um, Film 4 was doing a lot of experiment, like a lot of Jap- uh, Japanese stuff and uh, Chinese cinema was coming over, a lot of like, Kung Fu stuff. And I was like, so I was seeing, and The Matrix had come out, all these really cool films. And I was into sort of a lot of this edgy cinema. And then this, this, you know, there's a bunch of kids. I'm like, I don't want to watch kids. Like, watching a bunch of 10-year-olds doing anything in a film, I'm like, oh, I could, oh, I don't want to do that. And then the films kept going, didn't they? And it got bigger and bigger. Mm. And it was a furore, just like people just going, it was just, it, like, and so I mean, like, I thought, like, all right, I've got to check this out. I've got to do something with it. And the thing is, the first one, I don't care. It's rough, man. Those kids are rough. It's rough. But it's it's, it's like, hard it... to get through. And so we watched it, and I tried to get the boy. I thought, oh, the boy gets into this. It's gets to reading the books. It's a good. It's a good thing. Now he reads plenty of other stuff. But I'm like, why not? So we watched the first couple. I think we just like every Saturday night we put a movie on. We were like, oh, we whack on a Harry Potter film, and he's like, oh, and he's just getting distracted. and He's just not, and he he likes plenty of other films, right? But he's just for whatever reason couldn't get into it. And I'm like, and I think we got to the third, maybe the fourth one. And he's like, Dad, can we just not watch these? I'm like, okay, mate, <laughs> sure. And we just stopped. I think it was the third one. And I just, I love, I couldn't, I didn't take away a huge amount. I mean, you can't diss the like acting. There's a huge amount of skilled actors in there. And I'm sure the cast, you know, being around, you can't be around all those great actors and not get decent. And, you know, like, what a, what a, what a break into the industry. But, oh, you know, I just, Oh, it was just it was everywhere, and I think I'm sick of it now because everyone loves it, and it's just everyone I'm around is like so so mad for it. I'm just like you know what? It's like football. I'm just like you, you, everyone's telling me how amazing everything else. I, I can't, I can't, I'm, I can't like it now. I can't. You've just pu- you've pushed too hard, and now I'm like, no, I'm out. I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. So I'm, I'm out. I'm out. And I I feel bad because your your fair lady is quite the potterhead, isn't she? Honestly, she loves Harry Potter book. She loves it. She likes all the films. She likes all that. I can't. I can't. I, I just couldn't. You can't. You can't. I can't. I can't go where you're going here. I can't. I just can't. I like. No. It's not. It's not a choice. I just. I can't do it. I don't have the. Um, I don't have the minerals. I can't do it. No. But I think I found out because one of my other facts about Danny Radcliffe. One right. He, he's minted. He's, he's one of the most. Oh, of course he is. Of course he is. Yeah. It. Yeah. But the shocking thing about it, he's he rose his fame. He's got all this money. I don't understand how he got this all because he's left-handed. That's really weird. How do you get? I don't understand how you can get that famous and be left-handed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Doesn't make any sense. No. Hundred mil. Hmm. He seems like a ledge. He does seem like the like, like guns of Kimbo and things like he gone yeah, from Harry Potter he, he, to that. He film. makes yeah. these really interesting films, and that's a great film. That just that just no one wanted to see it because they just wanted to see him be Harry Potter, and it's yeah. it's kind of like. Dude, this guy's knocking out gold, right? He's made some really interesting films, and he he made one. Oh, what's it called? It's one where he's stuck in the jungle, and it's like it's really harrowing because he's trying to get out of this jungle, and it's based on a true story. And there's one where he's he's oh god, what's it called? He's dead. Like the whole film, he is dead, and his mate is dragging his body out of the, he's he's they've crashed somewhere, and he's like he's dead, and he is literally playing a corpse the whole movie. <laughs> They were just like the Harry Potter films. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sorry. but what an interesting choice. What a crazy film to, to he'd have to do that. He mm. could he could have been Spider Man. He could have been any of these roles, right? He's like, nah, I'm gonna do crazy shit. I'm gonna do this. I'll do that Miracle Workers show. I'll just do like low budget BBC shit. I'll do what I want. He's got hundred million on the bank, you don't give a fuck. He's he do what he wants. 
Yeah. You know, and he, he does some sort of yeah. silly roles. He does some like what are those um, magician films? I can't remember what they're called. Um, oh, but he was in well, one of those. No, wasn't he? See, no, that's um, that's not magician. Don't know. Don't know. But anyway, I think uh, what was his? Uh, uh, he began his acting career at the age of six when he appeared as a monkey in a school play. So that's so it's, that's not any of it, but that's that's another little bit of his practice. I'm just gonna sneak that in there. That was, Done. That was that was slinky. Let's um, let's leave that there. Go on, James. James, all over me. Go on, Jimmy. Jimmy. I'll oh, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, Jimmy. Oh, I'm getting low, man. We got to crack through this, right? Cool. Um. Well, do you want to crack on some like a chunk of yours and James Brown? Oh, someone stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> legend. <laughs> he is a legend, actually. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the most sampled artist of all time. Mm. Over 5,200 times he's been sampled in other songs, right? I bet that that must feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, I knew that it would. <laughs> so, right. Now, because America's fucked, right? So, he was arrested at 15 for burglary, right? Huh. Now, because it's America and he's black, they were like, we're going to try you as an adult. <laughs> and we're giving you 8 to 16 years for burglary. As a, he's a 15 year old boy. Yeah. He's like, I stole some, you know, I mean, he just, you know, he was, by all accounts, he was living in a bit of a rough area and he, he got caught doing a pinching some shit and that was it. But it wasn't like he had a history of crime. That was his first, first, first thing he ever got committed of, first thing he'd been arrested for and he didn't have a criminal record. He was, by all accounts, I mean, I don't know, I've literally got no information either way whether he was a good or bad kid, but there's no, that was his first offence and because of the nature of these things at the time, so he's put in prison at 15 for up to 16 years right Dude. so I'm like that is brutal so he's in there for about three years or so and he gets into this um, he, he, he basically says I need to do something so he likes gospel music so he's, he forms a gospel group now at this point he's got no musical training he literally he doesn't doesn't know how to do anything right so over the next few years he starts to work with this gospel leader outside the outside the prison and I think it's actually, I think it's a correctional facility. It wasn't actually a prison that it was referred to, so it might have been because he was. I mean, he was tried as an adult, but it was like it was a because uh, he was non-violent offender. Maybe he wasn't in prison, prison. But anyway, um, so he starts dealing with this, and over the course of it, he learns how to play the piano, uh, all manner of percussive instruments, guitar, bass. He gets to sing. He becomes a band leader. He learns everything, right? And he becomes the ship, and he writes these crazy like. Or, or, you know, orchestrations and stuff and he's by all accounts just a prodigy and this was all because he got arrested <laughs> you know like that was that was kind of what it was and then now he's considered I'm going to get through all the gospel stuff um, yeah he learnt piano, guitar, bass many percussive instruments at the time um, basically right so he's considered um, a, a civil rights hero because this is the 50s right he started chucking out songs that were so catchy the, when you think like black music wasn't in the mainstream at the time, uh, Elvis started singing black song, effectively singing black music, but he was a white guy and that's why he was so popular. That's that's largely accepted. Like he was basically he grew up in a black area. He was listening to all this like black rock and roll sort of like you know uh, R and B sort of stuff at the time. He started singing it, performing it. He had like you know black bandmates and stuff, but because he was a pretty white boy, they can market that. They play him on the white radio stations. Yes, go on. Does that make Elvis Presley the original Eminem? Yes. Cool. Okay. Uh, that was very concise of you. I wasn't talking about Elvis though. I'm doing yeah. James's. No, no, but but, this, but, yeah. but I'm saying like James Brown conversely was a black guy singing black music, but singing it such catchy shit yeah. that they could not play it on the white radio stations. Right? They were like Elvis is great and all. But this guy, motherfucker, right? <laughs> so he he he's, he was so good um, at what he did, and it was undeniable. Like he was just he was operating at this other level, and his live performances, people were like like having like they were fainting. He was just such an amazing like he was just do put on these like crazy shows. He'd have you know we've seen some of the stuff where he's got like yeah. a blanket on him. He just did these crazy dances. No one ever seen anything like it. But he knew how to toe the line. He didn't get too controversial, even though he was doing all kinds of shit. You know, like he was by all accounts a very naughty boy, doing all the all the things he shouldn't do, um, as was the style at the time. But 
Yeah, and and so and obviously he did get. I mean, like Malcolm X, he did deal with him. He did deal with a lot of um, the uh, the civil rights uh, fights at the time. He was involved to some extent, but fundamentally he pushed things forward just by just by the fact that he was a black guy and he was the biggest black star of the time musically. Um, but just because no one could not listen to his shit. It was like it didn't give, it didn't matter. Like it didn't matter how racist you were. You're like, yeah, that's a jam. Like, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that 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 shit's a jam, right? His shit is fire, right? Um, so it was, yeah. That, that that's kind of. I thought I was. The more you read, it's like the more you realize, like they they put all these like, oh, he's doing all these crazy things. I'm like, no, but he's not doing anything. He's just being great, yeah. and he's being undeniable. <laughs> yeah. And I just thought that was kind of cool. Like, like damn, like he just he just was so good. Everyone was like, no, fair play, fair play. I guess blacks were right. That was like that was literally it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's just kind of like, I mean, if if you're gonna you know prove your point, that's basically yeah. what they did in sports as well. In a lot of stuff, it's like just if we're just better than them, then they can't really mess with us. Well, yeah, fair play. <laughs> uh, you know, they just, <laughs> um, and that's and 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 then yeah, he killed racism mm. with uh, good songs. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, it's just, I, I got, I got some little, I got some weed. Have you ever had sandwiches? Yeah. How would you like two sandwiches? <laughs> oh, shit, son. Here in M&S, we have the new sandwiches, but Ooh. they're double sandwiches. <laughs> More sandwiches than regular sandwiches. We've got all kinds of stuff in there. We've got bacon and ham and yeah. cheese and other cheese, but twice. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Everything's twice. Double the sandwich, double the sandwich, double the sandwich. Double yum. Double yum, double cum. Mm. Sandwiches twice. Double it. sandwiches in M&S. Mm. You're literally cum in your pants. See, so you don't even know who gone. It's crazy. Dog's back. Belland. Guess who's back? Sandy's back. Sandy's back. Back again. Oh, right, anyway, so, so I've done James Brown. Dan me. Dan. Right. I'm gonna Dan you. Oh, oh, what the hell's that? Stanley. No, no, I just pressed on something and my phone was doing I was gonna call someone. But uh, Um Right. So my two I've got some what about Danny Glover. Danny Glover, really? Now you you think of a name like that. And I'm gonna think. Right, I'm, I'm gonna go onto the internet and I'm gonna say so many facts. But I really found it quite hard for like the fun sort of stuff. He's done a lot of things. Um, or was that Has basically? He? Well, no. In terms of um, like cultural stuff as well. Oh, okay. Sticking up for people and rights and stuff. He's done a lot of that. So I'm trying to find the fun things. But then I just keep on thinking to myself, I just remember the quote. Yeah, do you have this shit? I'm too old for this shit. Is that... Sorry, let me just read it. No, no, but that's... But it just, it just goes to show it's... Wait. I, for many, many years... <laughs> this is really bad, right? <laughs> I swear to God I'm not a racist. I just... I, I, I thought he was... Danny Glover and Ernie Hudson were the same person from, from Ghostbusters. I thought he was in Ghostbusters. And I didn't, I just didn't know they were a different person. And <laughs> they look very different. I don't know why. It was sort of locked in in my head. And then it was, I remember thinking one time, like, Ernie Hudson Ghostbusters looks very different. It, like, I, I thought he was Danny, I was mm. Danny Glover. And he was in, um, Danny Glover's in, um, in Saw. And I remember thinking at the time, like, ah, wow, I think Ghostbusters to this, it's a hell of a, you know, it's, it's quite yeah. a, quite a stretch. He's really he's really changed quite a bit. In fact, he looks very different in a lot of films, yeah. depending on who the actor actually is. And I just for some reason I just conflated these two people. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's a racial thing, but I, I, I you know it doesn't happen with anyone else. But it was just like Stan, mate. If you don't keep your knee decked, I'm going to throw you in the river. Okay. That. Okay. He's good. I mean, he's shaped like a boat, really. He's he got is. these big paddles. He should be fine. But he'll I'm float. Just, he'll float. He's a floater. So in terms of say you got, he's done God, the John. I'm too old for this shit award. This is that's what I said. Fine, but he's he's been nominated for lots of things. But I would have thought they would have got more more accolades in in like the acting thing. So, um, Academy Awards, he's been nominated for one. He's won one, hundred percent ratio. 
hit rate, hundred percent, mate. Ledge. Yeah, if you go, I go for it, I win it. Yeah. But then it what gets. What's that for? It's a, is it glory? Is it glory? What did he get it for? I can't think. What he got it for? Uh, He's done more films than I've given credit for. So I can't remember, so I said, oh no, I didn't say the fact for that. Um, I need to put my drink down, but I can't put it on the table because then I'll get dick punched. You will get dick punched. Uh, I've said I will. If I don't do it now, you'll respect me less, and I can't risk that. I can't have that, man. Uh, 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 in a limited uh, freedom song. I oh, know that is a nominee. Ah, oh, it's because I'm searching at the wrong thing. Um, this obviously is very compelling. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad you guys are getting the best out of us right now, as we search the internet to to back up the facts we've <laughs> said. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have asked uh, supporting questions. Gene. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, God. <laughs> See, I honestly, I know Lethal Weapon. I know. Um, I remember him being in Saw for some reason. I'm going through his other stuff. It's like I don't know a lot of it. That's it. Oh, that's he was no, he was he was the yeah. old boy in, in uh, Jumanji, the second yeah, one. That's it. He was well good in that. No, fair play. That was great. Um, I forgot he'd done that. That yeah, he was so good. I was very impressed. <clears throat> Those films are unreasonably good for what they are. They should just be crap, but they're like, these are great. <laughs> these are really, really well put together. Um, but yeah, because I mean, I watch a bunch of like crap with the kids, and then certain certain films like that, you're like, oh no, this is just. I would, I, I probably would have watched this anyway. He's done so much shit. I'm on IMDb. I'm like, just so much shit. That's it. Because I was looking on IMDb for stuff, and he's like, dude, not heard of that. But he's he's done. But then he's had like lots of nominations, so he's so hundred percent on the Academy. But he's been nominated for five, didn't win any. Been nominated for four Grammys, didn't get anything, and then two for the Screen Actors Guild Awards, didn't get anything. It's just I don't know. It's I just thought he would have won more things, but then I've not done my research and exactly what else he's done. <laughs> I've just seen him in some big films. Uh, the, he well, just does like weapon. thirty yeah. films a year. Damn. So many films. But not anymore because he's too old for this shit. He can now say that legit. He was saying that in like the 80s. Yeah. He just kept going, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But I don't know, he just seems like one of those people. I'd like to be friends with him, but I but I don't know really what films he's done. Not really since so. Uh, yeah. he's, I mean, he's been in huge films. He's also yeah. been in crap. He's just, he does everything. He says yes to everything. Listen to this. <laughs> Raw Tannenbaum's... Oh, I forgot he was in that. He's great in that. Well, no, I mean, everyone's great in that. It's a great film. He's not got a very big part in it, but he's, he gets, he's very good. Um, anyway, Danny Glover, too old for this shit, certainly today. Yeah. Um, but he's been too old for this shit his entire life, and I respect that. He come out of the womb saying, is this not over yet? You know, just... <laughs> I'm too wah, old for this wah, shit. <laughs> I've also done a shit. Uh, okay. Facts. 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 James Cook. Is he the pirate? He's not a fucking pirate. No, no. James Cook. And I'm going to say some of this shit because I, before I get to the actual... I've My my, my fact... my I basically put a lot of depth into his um, the end of James Cook. His end. Um, well, which I thought was particularly um, interesting. But James Cook um, was a... Um, oh, I was thinking of Captain Cook. I think that is James Cook. Oh, there we go then. Cool. Yeah. He, he was he was an explorer. By all accounts, he was the guy that um, he. I mean, he went on he was he went on secret secret missions for. He, he didn't join the navy. He was a um, he became a captain of a, a private boat um, before he became uh, joined the navy. He didn't join the navy till he was in his late twenties. And my, by most cases, like you would join the navy, work your way up at an incredibly young age, like. You'd have like um, I think they call them like the people who'd sit in the little oh god I can't even think crow's nest crow's nest they they were like twelve you know they'd have little little kids on the boat and they <laughs> they'd just be there little runners and stuff running around um, doing jobs you know like you know you were literally the mate of the captain or you'd be like the little assistant you'd just run around and do that and you'd learn all the jobs around the boat and you work your way up through the ranks over the years like the gophers yeah kind of just like yeah 
So that that's how you how things used to be. So he did that uh, on a boat, and then he went and joined the navy afterwards. And obviously, you have to start from the beginning again. But because he was he was so skilled, he did, I think he was twenty six when he joined the navy, um, which was incredibly old to join the navy to start that career because they all started really young. Um, so um, he worked his way up, became uh, undeniably a good. So he became a captain, Captain Cook. Um, he used to go on missions and he explored, he was the guy that worked out Australia, um, he worked out um, New Zealand because they, they didn't know that they weren't connected, they thought they weren't connected to mainland there and it was realised that no, it's an island, so he had to, he had to go around, the thing is like back then you didn't know, it's like I need to know, you go you see a landmass, you're like okay, is it connected to other stuff behind it, I can't see behind it, so you have to go around the entire island of uh, New Zealand which is not like a quick thing, go on. I thought for a long time, again, I'm not priding myself on my geography knowledge because I don't fucking have any. Mm. Um, I thought New Zealand and Australia were basically the same because they sound the same. And, you know, some's got Kiwi, some got Kangas. I mm. don't. New Zealand's a great. It is, it is like so isolated. Mm. I mean, like, it, it's, we, we think of it as down there with Australia, but that's because it's the closest thing to it. But it's 2,000 miles away. It's fucking far. I know two, two fam- no, three families who have moved from the UK to New Zealand. Oh, I'd love to live in New Zealand. It's like uh, Australia, but no, no, none of those big bus and No spiders. predators. There's no yeah. predators. There's no. insects. There's, there's yeah. giant, giant insects, but they won't hurt you. They have, they have the biggest insects in the world. Mm. They are the, the vet, the VETA. VETA, I think it's called. W-E-T-A. Um, the, it's like... Enormous, but it won't hurt you. They let you eat bananas and stuff. They just, you know, <laughs> they're like super chill. They're like, "How you doing, buddy? How you doing, Robert? You want it, mate? You want it, mate? You want that banana? Fair dinkums. Yeah, oh, no, that's Australia. Sorry. No, no, they're, they're far, far nicer. Yeah. What do I do? No, I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> from Birmingham, right? you can I, Birmingham know, music. I can't do music now. But anyway, no, they're they're just they're just super chill. But no, I mean obviously they got the um, there's uh, what's it? Once a Warriors that movie. I was like. Anyway, I'm going yeah, off on a tangent. No, um, he, dis- he didn't discover New Zealand, but he discovered that he, he was the guy, he would go there and he would map out all this stuff up, and they were the British Empire. This is back in the time when they didn't know, they like they thought there was a continent below New, Ze- New Zealand and Australia. They didn't know what was down there. They'd never been down there. So he went down there and just put it around. He's like, no. Nah. No, there's nothing here, bro. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> no, no. so he went down there. Like, this is like years of his life to go from England to the, uh, Australia, below Australia, fuck about for years, and then come back up. I mean, the guy was that's that's what he did. Anyway, he also uh, catalogued a bunch of these things. But so yeah, by all accounts, hell of a boatman, hell of a seaman. Um, <laughs> but his death. Now he was. Yeah, pretty good like dealing with like tribesmen and stuff and all these like these weird islands and shit um there's the cook islands i mean he 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 was he made a lot of good relations with a lot of these things right um now i for some reason always thought he got eaten by cannibals i don't know why i thought that but i always did but no this is what happened now he was dealing with the hawaiians the hawaiian islands um in his as he was older um obviously he was never going to get i suppose so <laughs> They originally believed he was a god because he literally turned up on that island. They he was one of the first some of these islands he came to because obviously we we know that like um, Columbus came over, but he didn't go to I think it was Haiti and stuff. Some of these islands he went to, he didn't actually in the Caribbean, but the Hawaiian Islands um, was largely uh, discovered and mapped by James Cook. Lots of ham and pineapple there. Lots of ham and pineapple. <laughs> I think primarily it's the primary exports. Um, <laughs> So it seems he, the, the Hawaiians, they obviously got a bit friendly with him. Sorry, no, we're on there. Oh, cheeky beans. Um, they stole one of Cutter, well, one of the smaller boats from his ship, on the sort of little uh, smaller crafts, and that really pissed him off. So he stormed ashore, took to take, he took their king, I'm going to try it, Kalaniopo'u, hostage, because he was so pissed off. He wanted to say, I'll take the king, they have to give me the boat back. Uh, his Hawaiian guard, Fear for their king, and during the tussle, um, his his ship, the Discovery, fired cannons at another group. This happened to be going on at the same time. There was a bit of a tussle over here, and that happened over there. But this freak cook out. So he's there. He's got a musket. He fires it, and he runs back to his boat, and he's like shitting it. He's like, "What the fuck? What's going on?" Right? This is it's escalated quickly. Um, the king, 
who would about, about to be he was he thought he was getting kidnapped so he freaks out and he they were friends up to this point they were very a good relationship so the king had just been given uh, a ceremonial knife by cook so in this moment he runs up and he stabs cook in the back and his guards run up after him and start stabbing cook in the back Dude. and they start mashing him against the rocks and just stabbing the shit out of him right so it becomes this just like frenzy of them just killing him and he's getting like dashed against the rocks and just stabbed to shit right he was effectively just butchered but then they were like oh no what did we do so they took him in they dressed him as a king for his funeral they 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 put sea salt on his hands apparently it's the thing they do and oh. they burn the body and they clean the bones to present them. They, they preserve these bones in these like pots I think um, and it was the, apparently the sign of the highest respect only given for kings so they killed him horribly but then they were like tried to give him the utmost respect as they you know passed him off so that, like there was a bit Makes of a no weird sense. one yeah. but if, I, I don't think they. I think they were like oh no they didn't mean to kill him it just it, every, everything got a bit sweaty and they just went oh no it's like you know it's like you stab him to death and you go oh, sorry <laughs> and that was their way of saying sorry um, but yeah yeah don't don't be an explorer because you know that'll happen do you? yeah that's, I, that's I, why I don't explore I always thought he'd been eaten but he wasn't eaten he was stabbed to death I keep Which getting is... mixed up with with Hook. So there's a crocodile bit his hand off. Yeah. That's that's just, yeah. Um. I've got I've got two proper ones and one that is just. All right. Well, I, I've got. I don't know about that other one. <laughs> I might have to skip that one. So what is I, I've got I've got two, mm. and I've got I've got a plethora of other crap as well. But you know. But, Danny Elfman, most iconic film Danny and television Elfman. scores. Mate, you know, you go, oh, that's Danny Elfman. You can hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I fucking love that film growing up. Mm. Um, he's a bad, bad actor, really bad. <laughs> hey. I love that. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, Pee Wee, yeah. Um, Batman, Edward Scissorhands, Hands, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Spider Man, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, yeah, because of Sam Raimi. Yeah. And that's it. It's, but no, I think he's he's got a very iconic sound to the music mm. that he does. And it's like, yeah, that's a small Elfman, that is. Yeah, but he does lots of TV work as well. Yeah. I think, oh, there's a bunch of, I'm sure, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That might have been him. Yeah, I think so. I don't, but like, he did, he's just done a bunch of things, but he's done so many. Well, if you go on IMDb, I, 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 I've... I've I did this before with him because you know he's actually um, he's not as old as I thought because a lot of them I, I think the all composers are like John Williams so yeah. they're all like oh they're all decrepit right but he's also um, started chucking out like rock songs oh yeah he's a proper like guitarist you know I'm claiming this fact as mine by the way I, um, I don't mind, I, don't mind. Yeah. I, I was like that can't be the same dude and uh, it was it was like oh this guy's a ledge I can't seem to look on um, but yeah, he's, he's, he looks like looks like a fucking weirdo, actually. Yeah, I mean, again, that's, <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah, uh, but yeah, he's by all accounts. You think Edward Scissorhands, Justice League, Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Because those old Batman themes, though, they're just undeniable. Um, but it's like if if you don't know Danny mm. Elfman. And then we say, oh, this is what he does. Here's a bit of his music. You go, shit, I've heard that in this. Of this. He's, he's got so many... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's many black. They're so iconic. Um, Good Will Hunting. Fifty Shades <sighs> of Grey. Dude, he, he does look a bit like if Willem Dafoe and a watermelon made a baby. Yeah. I think that's... that's <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not great. No. No. Hellboy films wanted the king. That was a good film. Spider Man's mm. was them. He's Hulk. He's superhero a lot. Planet of the Apes. That was a bad film. Not Tim Burton. The Frighteners. That is. That's a great score. First Mission Impossible film. Dolores Claiborne. Dark Man. What a great film. Beetlejuice. Midnight Run. Fuck. So he started his first. He did, he did like a little album, and then he did Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So he did an album. Yeah. 
And then he did, oh, what It's the Pee Wee stuff was like it was some of his early early stuff and it's That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, he started doing some rock concerts and he was doing some like you're just like this guy's bloody mental. It makes you want to look into him further. I think so. And thank mm. you for for opening the door. You're great, welcome. Yeah. Because we're going as far as Australia now, so we're halfway around the world for people listening. We are. We're getting listeners in yeah. Australia. Hello, Australia. G'day, mates. Thank you for listening. We're your fair dinkums with your owls. Hope you don't get no kangas coming along and take up your jib jeez in it. I can play the did you do, by the way. That's it. Next ne- next podcast, I'll bring my did you do. Maybe that'd be one of our subjects. Shit, son. Biscuits and did you do's. Yeah. Biscuits got done, didn't they? No, that's what sort of next week. No, crisps. No, but biscuits are done. Biscuits, biscuits and boring animals is fixed. That's done. That's yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that's, what, that's the next place. week. Yeah. But the following week, we could use the leftover ones and, and supplement them with new ones. Crisps and did you do's. Crisps and did you do's. <laughs> that's disgusting. You call that a knife? I <laughs> oh, see so you it's played Knuffy Spoonie before. Like, no, you just shit yourself. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's not a knife. You just crapped on my sandwich. Um, all right. Yeah, sorry, go on. D- Jimmy. I've got, I've got, I tell you what, right? So I, I was looking through Iconic Jameses, right? And the problem with a lot of people is that in terms of, that's interesting, they haven't got anything. So I was like going through them, and there's certain Jameses that are like James Massa, the, those those. Sorry, slappity face, slappity face, wake my face up. But there's certain people that you're like, they must be interesting, right? So mm. I'm like, James Hetfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, oh yeah, that's got to be, there's got to be some pathos, there's got to be some story, some stuff. So I'm digging into James Hetfield. I watched a few videos and I was reading about it. I was like, I listened to a podcast that he didn't, he was on Joe Rogan a few years back. And uh, I listened to it originally, and I listened to some of it, and I, I'm not even joking, I fell asleep. Um, he's... But did you sleep with one eye open? <laughs> no, no. It's a shopping little time. The thing is, I think like that some people can just be sort of iconic. Because the thing is, he has problems with addiction, and he talks about it a bit, and he talk, obviously he laments a lot of these heavy things, and I, I gather his home life wasn't great, but it wasn't like shocking. It wasn't like, you know, you hear some of these stories of these, like, tremendous, like, wow, what a... And he come out of all that, and he's, you know, this is great story. And he doesn't really have that. He doesn't. Um, but, so, James Hetfield, songwriter, artist, philanthropist, environmental activist, mm. guitarist, mm. addict, mm. solo artist, mm. actor, Ooh. voiceover artist. Ah. He's done all these things, and I'm like, fair play. Fair dinkum, son. But the problem is, right, he, he, he's obviously, if, if he's not clear, he is the lead singer, writer, one of the following members of Metallica. Um, and that is the most interesting thing about him. And that's kind of it. Like, if you hear him talk about his home life. Now, I mean, the podcast he's talking about his home life where he's, he lives in Boulder with his wife and they just have a very, very mundane life. And he goes out and talks for like six months out of the year or whatever, but he comes home and he just, you know, they they just watch TV and they, you know, it's a very boring. Now, he has since become divorced from his wife. So that, that's happened since since this, this interview. He's he's no longer with his wife, which is obviously very sad. Um, but maybe he'll make him more interesting because, God damn, it was just like, mate, you, oh, how can the guy who, who lives that life, who's been in, the, he's played, they've done thousands of gigs all across the world. They've played 60 countries They've played every continent in the world. They've you, played Antarctica. They've the, played, sorry? They've played to fucking penguins. Yes, right? <laughs> I'm saying they've played every continent. All the continents. They've played them all, right? I'm saying they've done all this stuff. And you hear him talk and you're just like, you, you could be just some guy you'd meet in the supermarket. He's just got, like, he's just, he's done all this. And I'm sure he, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying he's, uh, but I'm just saying he's kind of, He's got through it all, and like, the, and the big honestly, it's kind of a compliment. You can just say like, the guy's just yeah, he's just a normal guy. Well, if he'd done the voiceovers in the supermarket, unexpected item in the bag in the palm of hand. That would be a move. Uh, that would definitely be a way to go. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I'd love he did that. But he's, I, I think, mm. there's certain people you think I kind of. He's quite sort of serious. He's not very quirky. 
he's just and like some of the, you can like the lyrical choices you're like oh that's the, you know there's a lot of depth to that but I'm like I think he just probably worked it out in the songs and now it's just like it's just a nice guy it's probably probably good behind a barbecue you know definitely yeah he's got one of his barbecue faces <laughs> he's got a barbecue face <laughs> I don't know I just thought there'd be more interesting shit yeah uh, but you know it's a uh, He's got 26 tattoos. 26 tattoos. Now, that was a count from a few years ago, so he may have more, but uh, yeah. I don't know. He's, he, I, I looked into it. I did the work, but there's not... I mean, yeah, let's say, he talks about addiction a lot. He talked about everything that he's happened to him, he's talked about. So he's not like one of these guys with all these secrets, you know. He's not got... Um, he's not the tortured soul. And that might be why all their later albums have been so shit. Controversial take. But you know what I mean? Or, or just like... They come in. Um, oh, I factored all over the floor. I can't put this on the table. <laughs> no, ball punch, dick punch. Five finger dick punch. That's a band. It actually is what they call. Ah, I've got the... Sitting on a dog. How are you facting? I've got one proper big one and then one. <laughs> what about your facts? <laughs> one. Thank you, James. Sorry. Thank you for noticing. It's been out all night. Um, but, and I've got. Um, um, I call him Little James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, oh, and I've got, no, I've got one good fact, the big one, and then, um, and I got one piece of shit. He can't look at me now. Oh dear! He just keeps looking at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the time I could go home now. Um, oh. So my most famous Dan, Danny, Tell Gado. You know who that is? Danny Trigo? Danny Del, no, Del, Del, Delgado? No. Delgado, yeah. Is that it? Del, Del, Delgado. Delgado. Del, Delgado. I can't... Sh- sh- I don't want sh- sh- to see the facts. I don't want to read the facts. Just... Let, 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 show me the, don't you put it on the table, I swear to God. Danny Delgado. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. Pardon me. <laughs> 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 I've been chugging beers. <laughs> Danny Delgado. I had a curry and beer tonight. I'm British as hell tonight. I, I, uh, I thought that was Danny then. <laughs> no, that's all me, man. That's, right. that's a lot of garlic. God damn. Okay, go on. One of the most famous Dannys on the planet of the Earth. Never heard of Danny him. Danny Delgado. Never heard of him. Never once. Is the black vice in the Wild Force Power Ranger. <laughs> Oh, mate, no, you're right. I, I don't know why I must have blanked that out. Well, it's one of those things that's so important that I must have forgotten it. But he commands the Black Bison Wizard, uh, Wilzard, Wilzard, sorry. He is the best friend of fellow Power Ranger, Max Cooper, yeah, of course. and the love interest of Kendall. Yeah, it's just hot shit. Don't. It's, it's, it's fine piece. She's a pink one, right? I, I presume so. I presume so, but I think, you know, I, I wouldn't yeah, complain. She's pink, yeah. Oh, that's just that's guys talking. We got yeah, beers. You're fucking, fucking drinking some yeah. blood, man. Fucking just to click that shit. Yeah, yeah. fucking <laughs> spandex. Yeah, I keep Power Rangers. I show my yeah. Zord on. Ay ay ay, Zordon. <laughs> my neck clicked. You ruined it. You ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it, mate. That's not, yeah. that's not hot. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah. Power Rangers, damn, cool. That's um, I, I've got another small fact. Um, okay. I said you got. Let me I, just go I, I, this got, one. I got a good one. I oh, go on, go on. Go on. Um, Desperate Dan, fourth December, thirty-seven to two thousand thirteen. Uh, initially, Dan was a desperate, desperate and wrong side lord, hence his name, Desperate Dan. Later on, however, he switched sides and becomes a friendly mm-hmm. character, helping the underdog. Although sometimes the great strength causes him more harm than good. Desperate Dan, I did not know. Um, that the dandy was a Scottish magazine. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I, I, sorry, table kick. Um, yeah, but yeah, Scottish magazine. Desperate Dan. He was a bad bastard to start. Uh, he, he's a desperado. He said those pies was, with the big horns, didn't he? That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. He liked his pies horny. <laughs> 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 sorry, you have been a mood to eat those. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. Go on, yeah. Jimmy. Um. All right, so James the Fourth, or should I say James the First? Oh, mm-hmm. how, how is this? Now, this is the thing: is I didn't, I know James the First. I loosely know some of these things, but I don't really know. So, um, James the Fourth was the Scottish king. 
Okay. From when he was 13 months old. Maybe wee bastard. But then, when Elizabeth died, hey. in 1603, he became the King of England as well. Oh, fuck it. So he was James the Fourth of Scotland and James the First of England. Ooh. So he was the king, and then he was the total king for all of it. Um, as Queen Elizabeth had no children, so he, it was like he was the next in line. Because um, his... He was Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth was his auntie. Um, he did a bunch of things. He was a pretty significant dude in a lot of ways. Um, in many ways, he was. I mean, like, he was considered weak in a lot of ways because he didn't. Uh, he wasn't a big warlordy bastard. Because I mean, you think in the times of Queen Elizabeth, she'd been fighting the Spanish pretty heavily. I only loosely know some of the stuff, but like there was a lot of um, a lot of stuff going on during Queen Elizabeth's reign. And James I, by all accounts, calmed shit down. Um, he also set the... He was the first Stuart. He standardised, translated the Bible into English in 1607. Mm. Um, so the King James Bible was the first English spoken, English translated Bible. But it also standardised the English language. So there's lots of words that, you know, fucked off in that time. Um, he commissioned the new English flag for naval vessels, initially called the Union Jack which highlighted his preference for the French pronunciation of his name, which was Jacques. Jacques. Jacques, which is the French pronunciation of James. Really? Um, so that's why the Union Jack is called the Union Jack. Oh. There you go. The Union, Union Jacques. It's uh, a name, monsieur. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> just audio right that's the one thing I mean fuck's sake I would edit it out but like the one needs to know (laughs) Uh, I've had like half a bottle of whiskey and there was a hiccup there was a hiccup and a burp combined it's like a superpower he was just talking and he just his head exploded his eyes went super wide and he just flew across the room you're so, welcome um, I wish we'd been filming that no I don't think oh. anyone would be prepared for it oh <laughs> James the first <laughs> sorry back back to back, the... I can't I can't compete with your face explosion your, he, your hiccup he's Scottish right he's Scottish fourth but then he's number one he's he's yeah. He's good. Yes. Um, but yeah, he started the Stuart line. He survived the gunpowder plot. They were trying to blow him up and the parliament. It's that 5th of November. It was. Um, he formed the first colonies in the Americas, uh, including his namesake, Jamestown. Dad, I'd love to live there. Yeah, they would. No, yeah. I wouldn't. Not then you wouldn't. It was a bad time. Um, but overall, he was pretty chill. Not much, uh, and it wasn't much of a warmonger. He regularly fought against religious persecution, and um, there were lots of battles that he managed to sort of chill everyone around. He kind of like he'd find the common ground and chill things out. Um, although he was mega into the occult and led loads of witch hunts. Isn't that the really good bacteria? No, that's yakult. That's slightly different. The occult is. Witches and shit. Anyway, no, he went on low witch hunters. He thought witches were a real problem, and he's like, we need to sort this witch problem out. But he didn't like. He he didn't mind. Like there was lots of these buggers. Were like Elizabeth had been a big thing. Where I think, she, I think she was Protestant. She hated Catholics. All the other way around. I don't know. But she was mega. Again, one of them she was really pissed off with. Um, and and yeah, so he was like, oh, who gives a fuck? It's fine. And he was very much against that prejudice, right? Uh, obviously, there was a there was a, a sort of a standardised because um, uh, the Church of England would have been established by Henry VIII, which was Elizabeth's dad. I'm trying to remember my, you know, GCSE history of the, the monarchy. But um, I put him behind you. This dog's just getting all licking it. Leave him alone, you weird feral mongoose. What's wrong with you? Apparently, I'm delicious. Apparently, you taste amazing. <laughs> Um, he's looking every square inch of James, and James is not fighting him off that much. <laughs> I taste like barbecue sauce because I wear barbecue sauce. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, James first. Uh, yeah, 
like, as monarchs go, I mean, he ain't that bad. He's pretty sweet. And they were pretty much all bands back then. Um, and he had, you know, a conventional marriage with conventional children. And he just, he, he stopped everyone going to war all the time. And he stopped everyone getting persecuted so much. But he did burn lots of witches. And I'm like, I mean, swings and roundabouts, you know. Mm. I think, you know. If he was burning a lot of stuff, maybe he should listen to our adverts from the last last um, podcast. You know, he'd speak to someone. He might need to speak to someone. Yeah. Maybe he needs better help. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, and I've got... Not really a fact. More a piece of shit, but that's all i got left. Same. Same. Do you want to do your piece of shit first? <clears throat> so, Dan-related. <clears throat> Dan Sack. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> this dish was introduced by, to India by the Parsis of Zoroastrian sect who originated from Iran, bracket Persia. Uh, in the 7th and 8th centuries, the Parsis fled the Arab invasion of Persia and arrived in Gujarat, a state of the west coast of India. They bought with them Dansack. Mm. Fucking delicious. Yeah. But, yeah. And I, I can't if Dansack is quite a nice go to if I'm gonna have things I do like to experiment and get a bit of a I try new things, especially if there's about speciality, but, but, sure, uh, but you're never gonna go wrong with a Dansack. No. Dansack or a Balti is, is my, my go to's. Mm. Like, you're not gonna go wrong with either of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm 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 defactulated. Mm. I've got some other things about some old composers and stuff, but I think with time wise, let's see. Yeah, we're good. Okay. I. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. I was, I was going to do James Corden, but I can't. I just can't. He's such a prick. I can't. Yeah. Oh, I, honestly. I, just, I, I, I know people. The thing is, I remember when. Good save, man. He nearly put his phone on the table there. That would have been bad. But he didn't. He stopped himself. No dick punches for me. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll retract my fist. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. It was like Thanos was looking at my tickets for the smack of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all the jewels. No! <laughs> no dick! Yeah. yeah. It's a different film, man. It's a different film. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, but I'm like David Bowie, so my protection's got bigger. So. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't hurt David Bowie's cock. <laughs> I put my phone on the table, but what you gonna do about it? I don't know why. I'm the Goblin King, because I gobble a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know he did. You yeah. know he did. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, Corden, I just, because he's such a, there's, there is stuff to talk about. Most The thing is that, yeah, mostly it's bad. And I'm like, I don't want to shit talk to that guy. I just, oh God. I, I do. He just, yeah, but he's, I. This, but all right, all right. Here's 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 me being completely honest, right? Go on. <clears throat> I don't like James Corden because he's a prick. Um, he is a prick. Yeah. He has done many bad things, and he is, by all accounts, uh, he's terrible to fans. He's been very rude to people. He's made very off-color jokes. He's a sycophantic piece of shit. He's constantly kissing ass. He's shocking to watch, right? But none of those are the reason I don't like him. I never liked him. But First time I saw him, I was like, God, I want to push you down some stairs. He just, he's always struck me that way. And some people just, they just, you see, you see, you meet some people and you're like, God damn, no. You know, and he's that guy and he's just that guy. And I'm like, you know, like if I was in school with him, <clears throat> I definitely would have bullied him. Yeah. And I wasn't a bully, right? I wasn't that guy. But it'd make you want to. I'd have to. I'd be like, I need to bundle you into a corner and, you know, I'd like, write bad names on your lunchbox I don't know what the bullies do. I don't know but like you just you know these days everybody just sends you weird Instagram messages I don't know but like mm. I, I don't know but he just has always brought it out of me and then the facts backed up what my impressions were so I just took it as read that I'm like oh I'm a good reader of people clearly just got, but like and maybe that's true but I, I know people who love the guy and they're like oh I love him. and I'm just I've just every from the very beginning I'm like who is this bell? Like from from Gavin and Stacey, and you know, like just. Oh, Gav, shabalabading dong. Honestly, uh, in all honesty, I was bullied a lot at school, secondary school, um, at, at um, infant school. I, I was like the, the boss, you know, just saying. Um, 
But I say I would have formed a pact with the most dickheadish bullies mm. to say, let's bogwash the cunt. It all he walks in school. All oh, right, I'm James Corden. Right? I'm the poor one. Oh, I'd go to some of the people that I used to, they, you know, they used to be right dickheads to me. I say, oh, no, mate, do whatever you want. Let's get him. And yeah, honestly, I'd bog wash him, um, tea bag. I don't know, whatever. Mm. It's like people. Oh, you're yeah, like James Corden. Well, so the only comparison between me and James Corden is we're both fat. He's like, come on. Oh, we've got a bit of scruffy hair. Oh. Oh, so I'm like James Corden. No, honestly, if he's listening now, don't like him, mate. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's Bell. He's I'd, I'd, Bell. I'd burp on his face. <laughs> I'll do it, and I'll do like an extra breath as well, like that noise I had done earlier. Right, I'm yeah. sorry. Hiccup. Yeah, all over him. It's set of people you just like. You know, I don't want to get in a fight. I don't get arrested, right? But no, no. if I was in the lift with him, I would try and fart. I would try my very best to drop one. I don't. I'll, I'll, whatever happens. It would happen. It would happen. And I'd grab him and say, oh, did you smell that? Did you, did you smell that, mate? He goes, no. I'll do another one. And I'll make sure I save a little bit of turn lead for him. Let's yeah. go, boom. You kept oh. it as classy as you possibly yeah, could. I respect, I respect you trying. I really do. Appreciate we're, we're it. Of course, there's no class. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I've got I've got a list on some, uh, what was it, on Independent. They did a list of all of his shames. And I was like... I don't want to... I mean, like, I know he's a joke-stealing mm. sycophant, and I know he's made a tit of himself. I know he's up himself. I know he's rude to staff members. He's made them all cry, and I know But he's... he does rap battles, so he's cool, isn't he? Yeah. He's cool. yeah but he's cool with... He's, he's, he's friendly with, like, people who are more famous than him. He's one of yeah. those guys. Yeah. But then, as soon as the, uh, like, he meets, like, I don't know, someone at a restaurant or something, he's a bell I'm like, yeah, of course he's... Yeah. It's just like, you sort of see that from the beginning. He's like, yeah, he's that guy. He's just that guy. Um... But yeah, I've ended up doing a fact on him. I wasn't going to, but um, there you go. There we go. James Corden. He's my last. He was my tenth anyway. So I'm like, okay, I think he was tenth anyway. But um, yeah. But yeah, if I'm completely honest, I never liked him, and I, it's nothing to do with what he's done. It's just who he is. Just I don't know. Just instinct. Just just raw, <laughs> raw instinct. Um, I, I mean, just yeah. I did have facts on Daniel Clement Dennett the third. But he's a boring. He's a philosopher. There you oh, go. Oh, there you go. And um, Daniel, look, this is French. <clears throat> Daniel Francois Espéry Aubert, who was a French composer. There you go. That's that's original, isn't it, mate? Well done. You play piano. Daniel Coulter Reynolds. Ooh, he's a singer-songwriter. Again, I, I like the music profession. I think they're very good. But compare that to um, Power Ranger, mate. You, that's, I, I don't know. But they they might just. Mm. Yeah, good people called Daniel. They do good things in music. I I I, I work with someone on podcasts and in the band with someone called Daniel, who's really good at music. He gets a fist bump. Done. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you, man. So my next fact, Daniel Ward, lovely guy, lovely guy. Known him for years. He's very friendly, very helpful. Um, yeah, mm. yeah. Known him before I knew him. Knew him. So basically, the history of of Daniel Ward. Um, my mum, bless her, French, lovely. Um, I like to play music. I've done band stuff. Uh, I wasn't in the band. My mum saw an advert in the newspaper. Um, I then She then found out, and I saw some guys at the Tap and Tin and had a chat with them. Oh, that was Dan. Um, that was years ago. He was part of it. Uh, I then worked at Toys R Us, and I worked with people. One of them was his, his now wife. Didn't realise that. And I saw this guy who always used to hang around the multimedia department. And uh, that was Dan. So I've known Dan longer than I knew. So, um, yeah. Yeah, mate. He's a nice guy. I like him. He's, he's special. Oh. <laughs> oh, we get bra hug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And over the podcast, we get podcast money, bitch. That's it, mate. <laughs> ducats, bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mad ducats. Yeah, fuck uh, you, James Corden. You don't get podcasts. <laughs> no, no, no. He's got, he's got plenty yeah. of money. He's fine. Yeah, Bell, he's all right. Fucking Bell Factory. Anyway, let's not... Um, he's still a virgin. 
definitely. You've got kids, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm still, AI, I'm AI maintaining apps. that. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to talk shit and I'll make up loads of stuff. Yeah. Like, he's got, yeah, he's definitely got children locked in his cellar. <laughs> definitely. I mean, allegedly. Not his. Not his. Not no, his. no, no. just found him, stolen him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just like. He goes know, around shops waiting for the lost you, and found. And can I just it. say, if you say allegedly, yeah. can, it, can you say anything? Yeah. If, if I say allegedly. James Corden has Madeleine McCann in the cellar, right? Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> Allegedly, right? Stop podcast. <laughs> Allegedly, is that true, though? Oh, no. I mean, is it... <laughs> podcast sponsored by Carlsberg. <laughs> definitely, definitely allegedly. Is that true, though? I mean, could it be true? It, it's uh, definitely allegedly. Allegedly, you could, but it's not. It's, 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 yeah, no, I, you don't know. I a hundred percent don't know, but I'm just really it's not it's not gonna <laughs> it's, it's not. I would like James mate, Corden, you're a prick, but you wouldn't do that, mate. You wouldn't. You I, wouldn't. I don't think he, he would I well, don't think he's got the integrity or intelligence about to do so because he's not in a car doing a carpool karaoke with some special celebrity person. Alright, I'm James Corden and then I've got to be next to me, I've got one of the Bee Gees ha 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 break oh that's very funny that's very funny yeah no because I'm in the car with you and suddenly the Bee Gees turned into Michael Jackson <laughs> yeah no no I, I regret everything I just said I'm so sorry world <laughs> I'm going to rewind all that and not do any of that anyway yeah. um, we got uh, the cookie corner in a sec which uh, we yeah do is it is it some sort of cookie based corner, but we're, we'll try something. It we'll might try something. Have to, it might yeah, we might have to wind yeah. this down. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right, bye. bye. This is Waffles. Meow. Waffles is a seven year old cat and it's fed up with the same old dry and unengaging cat food day in and day out. Meow. But every now and then, cat snacks chow chow, Waffles can have the different delivered fresh every day. Meow. Just like the wild, our cat food is so fresh, it's Meow. still moving. From chickens to pigeons and goldfish and sharks, delivered straight to your door. Watch how your pet hunts for their dinner and makes them feel like they're in their natural habitat before they sleep on your lap as a sign of gratitude and a thank you. There will be a hell of a mess to clean up after, but it may be worth it. For a limited time, we can offer you a 2% discount on Entrails Cleaning Co. Yeah, Take wow. care of the god awful mess left over. Meh. Order your food today and call Whiskey Wine and Wisdom and get 60% off your first animal fee time box. Cat Snacks Chow Chow. Say meow meow to chow chow and see how cats now meow to proud foul but not cow. And kapow! That's how. Meow 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 meow. Cat Snacks Meow Meow. Meow. It's fucking James's Cookie Corner. It's a corner, motherfucker. Fortune Cookie Corners. Uh, dreams yeah, of dreams. Corner. Cookie uh, Corner of dreams and the magic. The sweet stuff. Show mm. me the crunch, show me the crunch, show me the crunch. And more crunches. That's called a try crunch, baby. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, now we had three left and we couldn't be fucked because it's just, it's taking too long. The um, first one was the best and the rest of them just be like They've been quite so normal, rough, so. like you will have a hat, oh for fuck's sake. Um, all right. Dein Leben wird der durch Eindrucker Bekanschaften berecht. I heard something about an erection and a Veruca. You did. <laughs> your Veruca will have an erection. <laughs> um, your life is going to be enriched by impressions and friendships. Oh, really? I guess we're doing that. Enriched by impressions, are they? Oh, is that a knock on the door? <laughs> <It's>, uh, Hello. <laughs> he's coming up. Oh, is it our oh, friend Arnold Swartz? No, it's really not. <laughs> it's not. Oh dear. It's oh. Kermity Frog. Oh, Kermity Frog. <laughs> so, so what's that one again? Your life going to be enriched by impressions and friendships. Hmm. Well, we've got friendships, and there's been some impressions. So, yeah, I think, I think, that's, right. I think uh, yeah, that's that's the that's this got to be one of the better ones. All right, facts number one done. done. Fact number two, James. She sind original and creative. My ah. are, yeah, you are creative and witty. Ha ha! I made a joke. Right, that's that one done. You are creative and witty. Yeah. 
That's a crap fortune. That's that's bollocks. Right, should I do the third one? All right. I think mine was all right. This this is all right. No, oh, sorry. Er persönlich Franzenlager wird sich und einiges ein einiges verbessern. Hmm. I'm even, Absolutely, I, I think that's right. Your personal financial situation is going to improve. Mm. I like this one, very good. So, let's talk about that. Now, obviously, we're moving into property. That was the first thing we said a few weeks ago. Mm. We've been pushing forward with that. It's going to take a little while, but mm. um, obviously, there's a lot of, a lot of money as well, you know. Mm. Uh, and um, there's a lot invested in various ventures. So, uh, your financial, personal financial situation is going to improve. I mean, you would say that. That's, 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 that's not particularly helpful because I don't believe this is actually binding. Um, but you got to think, when this podcast money starts coming through, yeah. hey, I'm going to be buying mink coats. Mink would, slippers. I think you'd work I think you'd work well in a mink coat. Yeah. I think you'd be walking around like Eccles Village just like yeah. just in your mink mink coat. People ah oh, that's minky. <laughs> that's that keeps it minky. Why well because everything's mink. Mink loafers. No, they call you Jimmy the Mink. Oh Jimmy the Mink. Better than Jimmy the Skip, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jimmy the Skink is now a mink. <laughs> oh, skink, Jimmy the Skink. <laughs> Jimmy the Skink. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Alright. Well, look. But I've also, in the cookie corner, got the great fucking quotes book. But I'm going to open it random and read one out. My quote of the day. You ready? So, well, no, we can't call it cookie corner anymore. So, basically, all the cookies are done with. So, it's cookie corner. This has been the last. So, thank you to the, the makers of cookies. No, fuck you guys. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. You had one crap pun which we could discuss, and the yeah. rest of them have been like, half decent. It's just garbage. Just, there was yeah. nothing. You gave us nothing. Yeah, you fuck were, you. You were a bunch of pains. I hate fuck you. you. So now we come to fuck you. Uh, sorry. Fuck you, facts. <laughs> fuck you. Facts. This is this is great fucking quotes. Just great fucking quotes. Hmm. Are these quotes great? They're fucking great, and that's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Um, you're not a fucking failure if you fucking tried. Oh, I like that. You're not a fucking failure if you fucking tried. I think that's a great quote. I think it's fucking great. But, but, right, you're not a fucking failure. Let me just eat if this you fuck, Yeah, there you go for it. That could be like the backing music. So, you're not a fucking failure if you fucking tried. What have you tried to not fucking fail? I could not hear you over my crunching. Say again. So, what if you tried to not fucking fail? But then, you fucking failed. So you're not a fucking failure if you're not fucking tried. But you have fucking tried and you just fucking fail because you tried to fucking try to strive in the fucking failure department. Yeah, but you still tried something. You tried to not fail something. And even if you failed it, at least you tried. The point is, it's better to try and fail than it is to not try because then you don't even know if you would have succeeded. Isn't it? You know? You never succeed if you don't try. That's It's basic, it's obvious, but it's like, it's a good way to look at things simply so you always... Put the best, your best foot forward. You always try your hardest. Better than a fortune cookie, but still, mate, nah. I mean, there's nothing much there, but it can't, you know. What could it say that's that insightful, really? You know, there's there's nothing, nothing it could say that would be like, wow, that's profound. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, I might get quotes of like, surprising quotes from surprising, you know. Mm. That might be fun. And we could just like take turns doing it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll get one for next week. I'll get a quote. Okay. I'll just get a like random quote that really like struck me as like, that's profound. That's cool. I might do a Winnie the Pooh one. I think he's a bit of a prophet. Oh, I like my honey. Oh, bother. Oh, bother on an owl. Is... Okay, okay. He's good. He likes a fortune cookie. Oh, go away, jingly fuck. But then there's Tigger. <gasps> Ooh, the wonderful thing about tickers. I think it's a wonderful thing. The top's made of rubber. The bottom's made of springs. A bouncy, 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 The single most wonderful thing about tickers is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Woohoo! Guest. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, whenever you're listening to this. But just have a great time. Um, I'll see you all next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye.